Good evening and welcome everyone to this meeting of the Western Area Planning Committee, especially those members of the public who are watching the streaming online. I'm Clive Hooker and uh, Chairman of this committee. Uh, the members of the committee attended this evening are councillors Adrian Abbs, Phil Barnett, Jeff Cant, Hilary Cole, James Cole, substituting for Howard Wollaston, Caroline Culver, Dennis Bennyworth and Tony Vickers, the uh, committee vice chairman. Uh, the officers advising the committee this evening are Simon Till, uh, Maisie Masawi and Cheyenne Kirby, our planning officers, uh, Paul Goddard, our highways engineer, Sharon Armour, our legal advisor, and Jenny Legg will uh, be our clerk. I'm also assisted this evening by Gordon Oliver, who will host this Zoom meeting. Before we start the meeting, and to be consistent with our council meetings, I'd like to remind members that we are subject to the council's code of conduct and require us to uphold certain standards, those being respectful to each other, to officers and members of the public. Members are not all, do not always agree with one another or the officers' recommendations, but I would ask that in any disagreements, we are always respectful of others' views and position. I would ask that we are mindful that officers are required to act professionally and impartially at all times in determining applications and in providing advice to this committee that they are expected to conduct themselves in a manner which preserves this position of impartiality in all they say and do. We all, there, we all therefore need to maintain the mutual trust and an understanding of the position of the legal and planning officers in this committee and of each other. Thank you members. I now ask Mrs Legg uh, to remind members and other attendees of this meeting about the way we conduct council meetings. Over to you Mrs Legg. Thank you Chairman. Uh, good evening. Standard Zoom, Zoom reminders are being shown on the screen now. In addition to those points, if it becomes necessary for any members to phone into the meeting, they won't be able to signal to speak. Therefore, once everyone who has raised the Zoom hand has spoken, I will ask the chairman to invite anyone who is joined by telephone to speak in order. Voting on the planning applications will take place via a name vote. Members will be asked in turn by the legal advisor how they wish to vote by stating they are for or against the proposal or if they wish to abstain. Please remember to unmute yourself before voting. Any other votes will be conducted by a show of actual hands during the meeting. Unless the committee asks for the vote to be recorded, the outcome of the named vote will not appear in the minutes. So anyone wishing their vote to be recorded must indicate this before the vote is taken. If we need to adjourn the meeting at any point, the chairman will adjourn and advise the committee of the revised time and date of the meeting. If it is a short adjournment, you'll be able to rejoin the Zoom meeting, otherwise a fresh appointment will be sent out. Do members have any questions about the way in which the meeting will be conducted before we proceed? No, everybody seems very, very happy. Uh, members, um, before we move on, um, I'll just put a note in. We have three applications this evening and I will invite uh, a comfort break after the second application. Depending how time is going, I'll ask your opinion. If you don't feel we need one, we'll, we'll push on. So we'll move on to the first agenda item tonight. That's apologies. Uh, Mrs. Legg, do we have any apologies, please? We do, Chairman. Uh, Councillor Wollaston sent his apologies and he will be substituted for by Councillor James Cole. Thank you. Item two on the agenda is to approve the minutes of uh, our last committee meeting, which was held on the 17th of March. Members, if you have any observations of the minutes, if you'd just like to raise your hand. No, we're all quite happy with those minutes. Therefore, I will propose those minutes. And do I have a second? I do. Councillor Bennyworth. And uh, members, if you're all in um, uh, approval of those minutes, uh, would you please raise your hands? Mrs. Armour, are you quite happy? Yes, I think that was um, over half. Thank you. Um, the others were uh, not attending, that's why. Um, so I will sign those minutes. Thank you. Okay. Um, item three on the agenda, members' declarations of interest. Hands up, please. Thank you. And for Vickers to start with. If you could put your hands up, please, on your uh, raised hands, I'd appreciate it. Councillor Vickers. 
Thank you, Chairman. Uh, yes, I'd like to declare um, a potential conflict of interest in that I'm a member of Green and Parish Council, and I see that the uh, the uh, there's mention in item two, the second application, about the possibility of at least part of the application being located at Green and Business Park. And uh, Green and Parish Council has a potential conflict in that we are promoting the use of the control tower as a Cold War museum. But I will take part in the debate and depending on how the debate goes, I will decide whether or not I should exercise my right to vote. Thank you, Councillor Colver. Thank you, Chairman. i just say that I've been lobbied on item two. Thank you. I think Councillor Vickers, you'd like to come in on that as well, wouldn't you? Thank you. Um, we've all been lobbied on that, yes. Yeah, I thought, yeah. I think we'll take it across the board that we've all been lobbied on item two, the um, memory application. Um, Councillor Hilary Cole, please. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, I'm a member of Chiefly uh, Parish Council, uh, and with regard to agenda item 4.1, uh, I was at the Parish Council meeting when this item was discussed, but I'll consider the application afresh in light of any further information received uh, between that meeting and this. Thank you, Thank you. Councillor Barnett. Uh, yes, um, like everybody else, I was um, lobbied on that particular application, but I do have some, some concern, Chairman. Um, I don't expect, as a member of the committee, to be told by an applicant that his application is coming forward at the committee, and I didn't even know what the agenda was at the time. I heard early in the week before Thank the you. agenda was published. So Thank I you. think in future it would be appropriate to make sure that we're informed what's coming up on the agenda before the, the applicant just tells us um, that his application is being discussed. That's, that's my own view, but uh, I don't know what other people's views are. I also visited the site in Hermitage uh, with a resident, so I ought to declare an interest on that, besides Tony Vickers pointing out that he's a member of Green and Parish, and I am as well. Thank you, Councillor Barnett. Um, Councillor Abbs. Uh, I'm also a Green and Parish uh, Councillor. However, I will be looking at the information presented to me this evening and judging it on the merits of the arguments brought forward this evening and nothing else. Uh, I'll just note that I was also lobbied on item two oh. I did across the board. Yep. Okay. So we we'll now move on to item four of the agenda, which is our planning applications this evening. We have three. Um, the first one is the Mary Hare Grammar School at Arlington Manor. Uh, Snell's more common at Cheveley. Uh, the second is the land south of Tower Works, Ramsey Road, Lambourne Woodlands. And the third application this evening is the land at the end of Charlotte Close in Hermitage. So for the benefit of those watching online, I'll briefly outline the format of each application. Uh, the officers will present the application to the committee. The drawing, site plans and any deemed relevant material submitted on the planning file will be shown as part of their presentation. I will then invite Mrs. Legg to read out the 500 word submissions sent in by the various representatives. These will be shown on the screen for clarity from the following groups and in this order. Firstly, the parish councils, any objectors, any supporters, uh, the applicant or the agent. And on conclusion of each of those submissions, I will ask members if they have any questions of clarification on that submission. All of the individual 500 word submissions which members of the committee will have received copies of and will have read. If they have got questions, the attendees will be invited into the meeting to answer those questions. If they do not have questions, the attendees will not be invited into the meeting. On conclusion of answering those questions, uh, the attendees will be invited back into the waiting room. Following that, I will then invite the ward member to speak. Um, they, he, she will have five minutes to present their case. Members may then, on conclusion of their presentation, ask questions of clarification of those members. The committee members will then have the opportunity to ask questions of clarification of the officer's presentation. And then the committee will debate the application and vote on the decision. So that's the format of our three applications this evening. And the first application before the committee this evening is application number 20 stroke 03074, which is the Mary Hare Grammar School and this is an application for approval of, of reserved matters um, on uh, condition 15 of highways. 
And um, for this application, I will ask uh, Miss Kirby to present the application to the committee. Miss Kirby, thank you. Yeah, could I ask her for a point of information first, please, before we go Certainly. further on this one? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, obviously, this, this application came forward, uh, but has been amended, and all the objections are basically are on the one subject about access, which yeah. have, has been taken into account. Is We must go through the whole process on this, even though all the objections have been taken care of? Not to jump in here, but Miss Kirby, would you like to answer that? I think you, you've got the answer to that for us. Um, yes, the application, um, the objections were originally due to the access along Arlington Lane uh, was going to be used. Um, and we've received over uh, 18 objection letters to um, the access. This has now, this was then relayed back to the agent and they've had discussions with their client, Mary Hare School. And now they are going to operate a one-way system, uh, not using Arlington Lane, but instead using um, the B4, 4494 to the west and exit on the Oxford Road to the east. Thank you. Councillor Abbs, does that answer your question? Well, it sounds like we must go through the process, but <laughs> so uh... that is the answer. Thank you. So back to you, um, Ms. Kirby. Thank you, Chairman. I'll just um, share my screen for you. Can I just double check that everyone can see that? Thank you. Oh, we can. Perfect, thank you. Um, as we can see, this is for Mary Hare uh, School. Um, this is the location plan submitted for the original application on which this relates, which is 1801161, which was a comment. Um, this application at Mary Hare School uh, seeks to discharge condition 15, which relates to highways construction management statement. The original application was approved and was for the construction of a single story primary school building and associated two story boarding house incorporating a part lower ground floor area for use by Mary Hare Primary School and to facilitate the relocation of the current Mary Hare Primary School from its current Mill, Mill Hall site. It also included a two story business centre comprising ear mould manufacturing facility audiology clinics, hearing aid repair shop and conference centre rooms, single storey vocational classroom block for existing secondary school, um, and single storey works to facilitate replace, uh, replace existing, formation of extended access to primary school building, reconfiguration of existing car parking, um, including cycle parking, provision of new hard and soft landscaping, new external covered space to front of Blout Hall Secondary School Building and other related works. Uh, this application has been brought to the committee due to receiving more than 10 objection letters. The objections were received to the original application um, stating that the road to the north, as you can see on this plan, uh, Arlington Lane, uh, was going to be used. Um, this is a classified C road. However, the width does vary and a large proportion of of it is single lane. There have been in total 18 objections to the application. The objections raise concern into the use of Arlington Lane for large construction traffic. The committee report sets out the amended traffic management plan and the construction management and environmental plan, which have been received and divert the construction traffic away from Arlington Lane. And instead they direct traffic in a one way system, which can be seen from this plan here. So, the traffic will, the construction traffic will enter from the site to the west on the B4494 and exit via the Oxford Road on the east. Members, your office of view is that in consideration of the amended documentation submitted and the council in relation to the construction management statement, it's now acceptable and the recommendation for approval is recommended. Thank you, Mrs. Kirby. We'll just wait for you to clear the screen. Thank you. Um, Mr. Goddard, this highways issue, uh, anything you'd like to address us on on this, please? Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, Miss Kirby has uh, uh, stated all that I would need to say and stated it very well. Um, with the changes to the construction management statement with regards to uh, construction traffic, uh, taking it off the narrow Arlington lane, um, that's overcome the objections. Uh, your highway officers are also content with all other aspects regarding the submitted construction management statement. Thank you. 
Thank you. Uh, we now move on to the written submissions and um, we've had nothing from the council, Paris Council, uh, but we do have a submission from uh, our objectors. Uh, I shall ask Mrs. Legg if she would read out the uh, statement, please. Yes, Chairman. For a moment, I'll just find it for you and share it on the screen. So this is, uh, as there were two objectors, Chairman, um, it's a shared statement. It's been summarised. So if you can, is that, is that right for everybody? Thank you. So this is from Helen Brown and Dan Brown. Welcome the change of management traffic avoiding Arlington Lane to implementing a one-way system by Oxford Road and Oxford Road and Wanted Road. Request that the council consider the option of putting new permanent signage into Arlington Lane to state that the single lane road with no turning capacity is not suitable for HGV. This signage will assist in two ways. Firstly, there is subsidence on the weak bridge towards the top of the lane, which has caused damage to the landowner's fence and field due to heavy good vehicles passing through. And it will help to further prevent issues here as well as keep road users, cyclists, walkers and horse riders safer. In addition, it will assist the school in managing the traffic to the stated aims within their revised proposal and help prevent heavy goods vehicles from using the lane instead of their proposed access. Mary Hare's own primary school project design and access statement April 2018 specifically warns against increased traffic on Arlington Lane for safety reasons. Instruction public consultation from 20th of Feb 2018. A statement of community involvement documents the responses, but in summary there was the universal support for the proposal subject to being satisfied that any additional traffic would not exacerbate issues already experienced on Arlington Lane. Site constraints, page 32. Potential for any new vehicular access, access from Arlington Lane directly into the field or from the existing school access road that runs along the east boundary of the field is limited due to the narrow single lane carriageway of Arlington Lane, poor visibility at the junction. Design statement, page 37. Avoiding impact of additional traffic to Arlington Lane. The second point refers to the environmental impact the build has considering West Berkshire Council unanimously declared a climate emergency on 2nd July 2019. The primary school building at Mary Hare School is proposed to be built on a one in five steeply sloping site. Retaining the slopes alone required thousands of linear metres of walls made from tens of thousands of tonnes of reinforced concrete. Excavating down three metres across the site is required to remove and transport over 100,000 tonnes of land. The buildings require further amounts of steel and are made up of brick and concrete. The design access statement celebrates a 39 reduction in CO2 from reduced energy usage. It, significantly men it specifically mentions that the site prevents it meeting the planning, pl planning policy requirement for all major developments to achieve BREAM excellence status. The carbon CO2 released from the concrete poured to enable a school to be built on such a sloping site dwarfs the benefits made from efficiency gains for decades. Due to the climate emergency, can the council and the school confirm that the use of flat and level sites that do not require thousands of tons of excavation and concrete retaining for a largely subterranean building have not been overlooked. The school has several flat brownfield sites available at white cottages near the school's main entrance on the Oxford Road. That's the end of the submission, Chairman. Thank you, Mrs. Lowe. Uh, members, do uh, any of us have any questions, please, for um, Mr. and Mrs. Brown on their objection submission? Could you raise your hands, please? No, we don't. Mr. and Mrs. Brown, um, thank you very much for your contribution this evening. Uh, I know you're in the waiting room there. We don't have any questions for you, and therefore um, I uh, will not be inviting you into the, uh, the meeting this evening. But thank you again for attending. Um, we now move on to submissions of supporters. We don't have any of those, and uh, we don't have any submission from the agent or applicant. So um, we now move on to our ward member. So uh, this evening I have Councillor Cole here, um, and I'm just wondering whether or not we've got Councillor Simpson in, in the waiting room. I've not been advised if he wants to speak. We don't. Thank you, Mrs. Legg. Uh, so, um, Councillor Hilary Cole, do you have anything to say on this application, please? I, I might drop you in this so you were expected to speak, but uh, you are. No, no, back. no. I, I am, Chairman. I just want to be brief. Uh, the the uh, 
next concern uh, was with regard to the access uh, for the construction traffic on Arlington Lane. That issue has, has been uh, resolved. So absolutely <laughs> nothing to add to what officers have already stated uh, with regard to the uh, amended plan. I'm satisfied with that, uh, as I believe the, um, the residents are as well. Uh, the other point I would make is with regard to their uh, comments about um, climate emergency and that, we're not here to discuss that this evening. We're just here to discuss the traffic uh, conditions. So uh, I'm happy with that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cole. Uh, and in courtesy, members, uh, anybody got any questions of Councillor Cole's very short uh, presentation? No, we don't. Good. Um, we now come on to uh, any questions of clarification of Miss Kirby's presentation to us on this application. Yes, we do. Cancel apps. Thank you very much, Chair. Very simple one, actually. The, yep. uh, the, if you would care to bring the, uh, the the drawing back up, it showed the uh, ingress and egress in and out of the uh, the site. Uh, quickly do that, please. If we can't quickly do it, I think her members may remember that um, yep. Yep. Here we go. It, it shows uh, the B4494 and, and the Oxford Road, and that's great. But how do how is the traffic intending to get to the endpoint? Um, it's not going to come off of the A339 up Arlington Lane and then just go into the site by that route, which would still leave us the problem with Arlington Lane, is it? No. Well, uh, how, what's to stop it? This is a question for Miss Kirby. Or, 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 or it could well be uh, Mr Goddard. More, more, more Mr Goddard, I think, maybe. Uh, Chairman, sorry, Councillor Abs. Um, you're still concerned that the HTVs might still use Arlington Lane. Have I got that correct? Well, they're, they're obviously not going enter, to enter the site through that route anymore, but the, the, the traffic has to come from so, somewhere. And it, it, it shows, the green shows the, the point at which they enter the site. Great. But how do they get to the entry point? What's the anticipated route of those vehicles? Because uh, that, that's, do we have any kind of assurance that they won't just come off the A339 up the Arlington Lane, which pretty much leaves the problem as it was for the residents and for the road. Although, obviously, they enter the point from a different location. I could check the submitted construction management statement, if you like, and get back to you. Um, um, I, I can answer that, Paul, if you'd okay, like to. Okay. Please. <laughs> um, so the agent has um, put in the construction management statement that they will put signage temporarily on Arlington Lane to advise them not to use that. They will inform the delivery drivers and they'll have a, um, a site officer in yellow advising them on where to go. And they have a pre-planned route, which they will advise deliveries. That, that's all I needed. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you for the question, Shia. And uh, thank you for that answer, Ms. Um, Kirby. Um, Councillor Calder, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, just wanted to ask the officers if they're satisfied that um, following the changes that have been made, that the issues that of concern regarding verges and hedgerows have also been resolved, um, and whether you anticipate there would be any kind of impact um, on the bee belt reserve, Snellsmore Common, which I believe is directly opposite to the entrance to the construction site. Ms Kirby. Um, because they won't be using Arlington Lane, we don't have concerns of um, the verges for there. Um, the other the other two accesses going to be used are already used frequently by existing large vehicles. So we're quite limited on what we can uh, do there, unfortunately. Uh, Mr Till. Um, I'd just like to add, in respect of concerns regarding the BBAT reserve, um, this has been considered under a full planning application and uh, any considerations in respect of impacts on the BBAT reserve would need to have been addressed under that full planning application rather than this discharge of conditions application. Thank you, that's very helpful. Um, Councillor Culver, did you want to come back on that? Thank you. We're all um, finished with our questions, and therefore, um, Mr. Gardner, any more on uh, any more on highways? I think we covered the one highways question, but uh, no, no other questions for highways of Mr. Goddard. Councillor Hillary Cole. Oh. I've put my hand up in anticipation of the debate, 
Yes, yeah, that's next. You're, yes, you're, you're pushing on with the pace. So I will now open up that and I will invite Hilary Cole, <laughs> yes, Hilary Cole to open the debate. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, mindful that we've got a major application to determine this evening, uh, and I'm uh, satisfied, as I believe uh, the uh, objectors are, with the uh, amem with the uh, uh, amendment to this discharge of condition. I'd like to propose that we accept officer recommendation in order to move this on. Thank you. Thank you. I have a proposer, and um, next hand up, I think, was. Um, I've got Councillor Abs next, or I thought Councillor Vickers. Oh, uh, Councillor Abs, I'll take you. I'll, yep. I beat him to the punch. Just yep, yes. well <laughs> uh, I'm happy to second the. the uh, I'd like. To, I would like though that the officers make sure that uh, this the signage and um, we do everything we can. There were some requests of the public in the in the letter there to to make sure that this permanent notice is placed and, and that we, we if we can get that done because it will never be good for heavy goods vehicles to go up Hollington Lane. So if we can do anything about that in relation to that. If we can't, then we'll consider that at some other committee meeting, but um, let's make sure that we do put those there and therefore I'm happy to second this. Thank you, Councillor Rav. And uh, Councillor Vickers. Yes, uh, similar point. I, I mean, I think it could belong in an informative, but it's not strictly relevant to the matter we're considering tonight. But I do think Arlington Lane, I, I mean, I, I, <coughs> use it for circular walks uh, around and beyond Snellsmore Common and Arlington Lane really is not for HGVs and if it could be permanently made uh, as soon as possible preferably before this application commences if if perhaps um, on Transport Action Group or through a ward member um, appeal that could be done that would be great. Thank you very much. That's all. Thank you. Well, I think that's the end of the debate on this one. And I do have a proposer, um, Councillor um, Hilary Cole, and a second, uh, uh, Councillor Adrian Abbs. Um, Miss Kirby, Miss Armour, uh, are we quite happy that uh, Councillor Abbs' uh, observations of signage uh, is uh, in, uh, included in any additional conditions if they're not already? Can you just uh, that uh, confirmation, please? In terms of permanent signage, because yeah. I think that is a matter not for this committee. That would be a matter mm. to be taken elsewhere. In terms of yeah. the temporary signage, I believe Ms Kirby said that it is in the construction management statement. Thank you. So that's all covered. So we're quite happy with all the all the terms and conditions of this um, application. Chairman, can I just say, I, yeah. I will take Councillor Abbs point up as ward member uh, and uh, direct that uh, request to highways about yes. a, a, a sign for uh, HGVs. Um, Thank you very much, Councillor Thank you for that. Therefore, um, the recommendation is for Hiller Planning Countryside be authorised to uh, grant this permission uh, at the Mary Hare Grammar School. The application for approved and of, of details uh, reserved by Condition 15 Highways, um, with a proposal of Hillary Cole and second by Councillor Adrian Abs. Uh, Miss Arnold, would you carry out the vote for me, please? Yes. So this is for um, discharge of the conditions. So for officers' recommendation, Councillor Abs. Four. Councillor Barnett. Four. Councillor Bennyworth. Four. Councillor Kant. Four. Councillor Hillary Cole. Four. Councillor James Cole. Four. Councillor Colber. Four. Councillor Vickers. Four. And Councillor Hooker. Four. Okay, so that's unanimous then. Thank you. Therefore, this application is approved. Our second application uh, this evening is application 19 stroke 02979. This is for land south of Tower Work at uh, Ramsby Road in Lambourne. This is an outline application for the erection of new logistics warehouse building. This is for the occupation by uh, Walker Logistics. Um, that's for class B8 with ancillary office floor space, an aircraft museum building, which is class D1, an associated access car parking and landscaping. The matters to be considered are scale and as laid out by um, Mr. Till. Uh, this has come to committee by uh, 10 letters or more of objection from the public. Mr. Till, would you like to uh, present this application to the committee this evening, please? Thank you, Chairman. Um, I should just share my screen. Can you confirm that you can see my screen? I can, thank you. 
Thank you, Chairman. Um, members, this application seeks outline permission for the erection of a logistics warehouse with ancillary office space and an attached muse museum for the applicant's private collection of World War II aircraft memorabilia, together with associated car parking, landscaping and access works. The matter for detailed consideration in this outline application is the scale of the proposed development. Matters reserved to a subsequent reserved matters application would be access, layouts, landscaping and detailed design. This application has been called to committee due to receiving more than 10 letters of objection. Um, you'll note on your update sheet that the agenda report contains an error in terms of the number of letters of objection and support received. And I can confirm that the number of letters of objection received is 56 and the number of letters of support is 34. Petitions of 176 signatures in objection and 61 signatures in support have also been received. Your officer's recommendation is for conditional approval. Members, the application site is located in the North Wessex Downs AOMB, outside of any settlement boundary and alongside of, but outside of the Membry protected employment area. Referring to the presentation slides, this is a view of the application site along Ramsbury Road, looking north, and you can see to the northeast of the site, the existing grain silos behind the landscaped boundary there. Um, this is a view looking, we uh, looking south along Ramsbury Road. At the back of the site, you can see the two industrial sheds that form part of the protected employment area. Um, this is a view of the um, application site, which is adjacent to the industrial buildings looking to the southwest. Um, this is across the tree belt to the rear of the site. Um, separating the site from the Membry runway. Um, these are the grain silos and industrial buildings looking up to the north of the site within the protected employment area to the north. Uh, this is from within the protected employment area as the road approaches the site looking south. And it's worth noting that in the distance of this view, are the nearest residential dwellings, which are approximately 150 metres from the site. Um, this is looking again across the adjacent industrial building southwest, uh, and this is alongside those residential dwellings um, to the northeast of the site. Um, and this is the applicant's existing. Um, site within the protected employment area to the south, uh, which is also in storage and distribution use. Um, members, this first drawing is the indicative layout for the site. Um, while you'll notice that layout is a reserved matter, due to landscape impact considerations that I'll refer to later on, um, and um, in condition uh, and um, the condition three of the report on page 59 um, makes a recommendation that the layout shall be in broad accordance with this drawing. Um, in terms of the principle of development, members will note that the application has been advertised as a departure from policy. This is because the applications for a major industrial development in the AOMB and outside of the protected employment area. The MPPF um, states that major development should only be accepted in the AOMB where it can be proven that an exceptional need for development exists. Policy ADPP1 states that the development in the countryside should be focused on addressing identified need and maintaining the rural economy. Policy CS9, however, requires that proposals for industrial and distribution development are directed towards the district's existing protected employment areas. And it does note that proposals for development outside of the PEAs should be assessed against compatibility with the existing uses in the area surrounding the proposal, the potential impacts of the proposed uses, 
um, and the impact on the road network and access by sustainable modes of transport. Your officers have given careful consideration as to whether the proposals would meet the test of exceptional circumstances. Key to these considerations were cons consultation with the economic development officer who agreed with the applicant's submission that there were no other preferable sites within the district for providing adequate land for these works within or adjacent to an existing protected employment area. Um, and the planning policy officers detailed comments that note that the provision of allocated land for industrial uses and distribution uses is currently under review. And those comments corroborate that there's a shortfall in available land within the existing PEAs. Um, also key to officers' consideration is that Walker is an existing successful medium-sized business in the district, currently employing 81 full-time positions and has, uh, has a demonstrable need to grow. Officers recognise that COVID um, in particular has placed an emphasis on the need for, uh, for logistics as a business and the applicant submissions highlight a concern that the need for expansion may force relocation of the business to outside of the district. Members, you'll note that a figure of 40 additional full-time posts is listed in the officer's report, um, but the applicant's written submission states 200. It's understood that this is based on updated predictions where the report is based on the original submission, but members may wish to query this with the applicant in their questions regarding the written submission. In light of the applicant's circumstances as a successful medium-sized rural business, the creation of jobs associated with this development and the strong support for economic development set out in the NPPF and in consideration of the particular circumstances of the site in terms of its location alongside the PEA, um, on balance, officers support the principle of development in this case. Key objections to this application are in the form of landscape impact, impact on the amenity of nearby residential dwellings and the impact on highway safety and sustainability of the location. I'll address each of these points in turn. In respect of landscape impact, members will note that there are detailed comments from both the North Wessex Downs AOMB board who are strongly opposed to the development and the council's landscape consultant whose view was more balanced. The site is mainly viewed from Roundtree Road, consists of a field in agricultural use bordered by trees to the west and north, buildings within the existing parts of the PEA to the northeast and south, and Roundtree Road to the east. Further east, the landform consists of open fields. The proposed works would be situated alongside the existing belt of trees to the north and west, as per the indicative layout. The proposed building would have an overall length of approximately 165 metres, a maximum width of approximately 80 metres. The maximum roof height of the building would be 12.6 metres. This is a substantial building, members, and it will be apparent in views from Ramsbury Road for a stretch of approximately 150 metres. However, the landscape consultant has also given a detailed consideration to the relationship of the site um, with um, relation of the ship of the site, sorry, with the surrounding land and its contribution to the landscape, which is substantially in adding to the open character of views and breaking the appearance of development between the parts of the PEA. The indicative layout sets back the proposed building 150 metres into the site and provides approximately 110 metres for landscape planting. The landscape consultant has noted um, that the large silo buildings to the north of the site are now substantially screened by the mature trees that formed part of their landscaping scheme. And similarly, a well-designed landscaping strategy allowing for shorter and longer term planting would offer the opportunity to significantly reduce and mitigate the impact of the proposed buildings in surrounding views. 
The resultant impact would be mainly the loss of the site from the open character of views from Ramsbury Road, while the building itself would be in keeping with much of the nearby industrial development and matters of design and choice of materials would be controlled under the subsequent reserve matters application. Therefore, while your officer's considerations are very finely balanced on this point, it is your officer's view that the resultant landscape impact of the proposals would not be sufficiently detrimental to outweigh the associated economic benefits of development in this particular case. Moving on to the highways impacts, many objections raise concerns with the associated vehicle movements and several transport studies have been submitted by both the applicant and objectors. However, the highways officer has assessed the associated impacts and has not raised any objections in terms of either highway safety or impact on the local transport network. The highways officer does not, uh, sorry, the highways officer does object on grounds of sustainability of the location and notes that the site is located such as the uptake on sustainable modes of transport would be unlikely to be high. Your planning officers take these concerns very seriously, particularly in light of the council's climate change emergency. We accept that the location has poor sustainability characteristics and that matters such as provision of a bus for employees would do little to mitigate this. However, it also has to be balanced against the economic benefits of retaining the business in the district, given the lack of preferable options for the applicant to relocate. On balance, officers are of the view that given that memory is already an area of preferred um, preferred for business development, albeit that the site isn't allocated and that there is a recognised need to provide sites for industrial and economic purposes in this district, the concerns regarding sustainability would not in this case outweigh the economic benefits. Turning to the amenity of nearby residential occupants, many of these concerns relate to vehicle movements. And in, re, um, and in this respect, the applicant has offered to enter into a personal planning commission, which is recommended as a condition on the update sheet. The highways officer hasn't objected to the proposed number of associated vehicle movements. And it isn't considered that, uh, sorry, it is considered that a personal planning commission is a prudent safeguard to ensure that proper scrutiny is given to these matters in the event that a future occupant of the site were to propose a more intensive level of use that might result in significant additional vehicle movements and the additional disruption associated with uh, nearby residential occupants, the nearest of whom, as I've mentioned, are 150 metres from the application site. Additional conditions are recommended in respect to noise management, control of external lighting and a control of hours of external operation, including deliveries and loading of vehicles. Subject to these conditions, officers are of the view that the impact on residential amenity, given the level of uncontrolled activity in the surrounding protected employment area, will not be such as to result in a significant additional level of impact on residential occupants. Noting the AOMB location in respect, of uh, in respect of ecology, conditions are recommended in terms of landscape and construction ecological management. Members, the final matters uh, for me to refer to are the update sheet and departure from policy. The update sheet covers the, correct, uh, covers the correction on numbers of representations and conditions in respect of hours of operation, personal planning permission, public access to the museum, provision of a travel plan and restriction of use of the building. In respect to the departure from policy I have advised you of, I've discussed this in detail with the development control manager. Having satisfied the procedure for publicising applications that result in a departure from policy and having advised you on what that conflict with policy is and the reasons this particular, um, reasons this partic uh, particular to this site and this application, um, 
Officers have taken the view that the application would not need to be referred to the district planning committee if you resolve to support officers' recommendation. The specific circumstances of the particular site and proposal are such that they are unlikely to be re repeated across the district in a way that would undermine the implementation of the development plan. Members, in summary then, your officer's view that, um, is, in, is that in consideration of the economic benefits associated with this proposal, which are considered in this case to provide exceptional justification to outweigh the detrimental impact in terms of the landscape impact and sustainability of that location, your officer's recommendation is approval, subject to the conditions in the report and on the update sheet. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Till. Members, a lot to take in there, and I'm sure there's a little bit more from Mr. Goddard with regards to the um, transport issues um, due to the sustainability of this site. Um, maybe um, transport being offered by the uh, by the applicant, etc. So, uh, Mr. Goddard, we'd like to uh, give me your uh, views, please, on the highways matters. You're muted. That's better. Thank you, Thank Chairman. You. Thank you. Um, there are some sections within your committee reports uh, dealing with uh, transport issues on pages 42 and pages 56. I'll also cover the transport policy comments that are on page uh, 46. Um, there, are, as, as Mr. Till stated, there are two uh, significant issues that your high officers have viewed regarding this proposal. The first is the traffic impact. The second is the sustainability of the location that the proposal is situated in. The site layout and parking levels are acceptable. Um, but these matters are, are reserved. A number of transport statements have been submitted, including one very recently uh, with updated uh, uh, traffic uh, survey counts to and from the actual site. It is projected that there would be 160 additional vehicle movements a day from this proposal, including 38 HGVs. Uh, this is about doubling the current uh, survey level of traffic uh, to and from this development site. This is considered to be not severe with regards to the B4000. On page 43, I have included some um, data that survey data that, that, that your uh, highway officers have taken over the years. It seems to suggest that on the B4000, uh, there has perhaps been an increase in car vehicle movements, but um, whether there's been an increase in HGV vehicle movements over the years, the evidence is somewhat limited. I'm not being dismissive of the concerns of residents, which I'm sure you'll hear in a minute, uh, it, concern of increased traffic and increased HGVs along the B4000 has been a consistent concern of many residents uh, for many years. But the evidence before me and the limited increase in traffic uh, makes it difficult, in my view, uh, to object. Mr Till mentioned a personal consent. That's quite important. Uh, if it was an ordinary B8 warehouse and distribution use, uh, we would be expecting about four times uh, the 160 additional vehicle movements that I mentioned earlier on. And there is a personal consent that is included uh, in your update form. So we're not objecting on increase in traffic grounds, but your highway officers are objecting uh, on the issue of sustainability. There are no bus stops or bus services anywhere near uh, this location. There are no footways. Therefore, the only way that anybody can travel to and from the site is by car. Uh, this has been a long concern that your highway officers have had regarding any new proposal in this location. In response, the applicants and their highway agents have proposed or 
mentioned the provision of a travel plan and a minibus. However, uh, this does not satisfy the sustainability concerns. We've had um, a number of these proposals over the years uh, from sites that are, are unsustainable. It is quite a well-worn path in our view. A bus service and a travel plan is proposed in order to, um, I'm not saying it necessarily is in this case, to get the planning application over the line. But within a short period of time, perhaps a year or two, the bus service is no longer running because it's proved to be too expensive and the travel plan is no longer operating. We have not, as officers, not had a good track record on the provision of bus services for employees. One recent example is the Harrods Distribution Depot in Thatcham, which originally had a shuttle bus service. And it was found that one wasn't even viable for an employer that size. Regarding the travel plan, it is very well or fair enough to uh, include that as a condition, but it's unlikely owing to current resources that transport policy team would probably monitor um, the provision of that travel plan. We do monitor travel plans for large employment sites like Vodafone, like the Harrods Distribution Centre, etc., and obviously very large residential developments such as Newby Racecourse. Unfortunately, um, this development doesn't fit in anywhere near the criteria for those developments. So therefore, I must conclude that your highway officers object to this proposal on sustainability grounds and consider that the proposal is contrary to policy, C policy CS13 of the core strategy, the local transport plan, and the climate change emergency that this council declared in August 2019. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Goddard. Members, we now move on to our um, submissions. And uh, Mrs. Legg, the first one is from Lambourne Parish Council. And uh, I'd ask you to uh, read that out. But before you do, uh, can I confirm that uh, Mrs. Cocker, should we have a question, has managed to get her internet sorted and she is in the waiting room? She was a moment ago, I'll just double check. Yes, she's there. We're all Thank good. you. It's okay. So members, if you do have a question, uh, Mrs. Cocker has managed to uh, join us. So, um, Mrs. Legg. Chairman, here we go. So this is, as you say, from Lambourne uh, Parish Council. The building will have a huge visual impact within the North Wessex Downs AOMB. The tree planting scheme is not sufficient to mask the mass bulk of the development. And even if maintained and retention enforced, it will take years to establish. West Berkshire Council's landscape character assessment describes this area as having a mosaic of fields, woodlands and small settlements, but including more open and expansive views. The scale of the application does not fit with this landscape mosaic. The site is adjacent to the part of the Lambourne Woodlands designated employment area, which consists of several relatively small sites a fragmented arrangement fitting the characteristics of the landscape. By building here, the applicant will link two of these sites, making a ribbon of industrial development through the AONB along the narrow rural Ramsbury Road. It will effectively increase the area of the BEA without proper public consultation, compromising the consultation on policy SP21 by EMP5 in the local plan review. Lambourne Barish Parish Council supports local industry and employment and agrees with the NWD AONB that rural businesses employ local people, provide services to improve the quality of life, spend money locally, promote community cohesion and have a smaller environmental footprint by reducing the transportation of goods from across communities. This development is neither small nor can it be said to promote local employment. This application states that as of November 2019, Possibly 35 of the current 83 FTE staff live in the West Berkshire area. Others are busting from Swindon and Reading, and the documents provided imply that the closure of Honda will provide a pool of workers. These employees will not spend money locally. Local residents are very concerned about the amount of heavy traffic on Ramsbury Road and Ermine Street, B4000. Walk Logistics advertises on its website that it can now offer online retailers next day delivery services seven days a week and their clients include national and international companies, 
such as Royal Mail, UPS and DPD. This indicates that the scale of the business is increasing its environmental footprint as well as the number of HGVs visiting the site. The applicant's transport assessment notes that there are no footways or streetlights along that Roundtree Road and Ermine Street. The nearest bus stop is 1.9 kilometres away and travel by public bus is not considered to be a practical and safe option. The number of parking spaces in the application, a total of 93, notwithstanding car sharing and minibus schemes, demonstrates that employees and clients are expected to use cars. In other words, this location is not sustainable, a view echoed by planning and highways officers, both in comments on this application and the Lamb 6 site in the HELAA. Lambourne Parish Council considers this development is unsustainable and the harm done to the AOMB is not outweighed by other considerations. It urges you to reject this application. That's the end of the Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mrs. Lang. Uh, members, do we have any questions of uh, Miss uh, Mrs. Cocker? Thank you, um, Councillor James Cole. Um, if you could invite um, Mrs. Cocker into the meeting, please, uh, Mr. Oliver. She should be in the meeting. Just needs to start her video. Thank you. In that case, can Councillor Cocker hear me? Uh, yes, yes, I can. Good evening, Councillor Cocker. Good evening. <laughs> this application very clearly turns on the, the economic aspect. How much unemployment is there in the Lambourne area? Um, that's always a difficult uh, uh, one to uh, establish because there are no ward level unemployment uh, statistics. And of course, our major employer, the racing industry, it's a transient uh, form of employment. So, you know, numbers fluctuate anyway. Um, a recent indicator may be the use of food banks, um, especially the Lambourne Junction for which the need fortunately seems to be declining a little bit. Otherwise, when it comes to actual numbers, I think we would have to sort of extrapolate, um, I, well, I don't know quite what formula, uh, from the West Berkshire figures, which might, I suppose, be about perhaps around 100 unemployed. But as I say, it's, it's a bit of a, of a guess. Of which some would be interested in being employed here. Presumably some would be, yes, yeah. Okay, um, that's a subject for our discussion later. Um, Chairman, may I ask another question? You do, please, yes. Um, this seven days a week aspect, addition proposed does not permit seven days a week for would you accept that this does mitigate that aspect? I'm sorry, Councillor Cole. I, I think possibly my my link is a bit unstable. I missed the beginning of your question. I think May I repeat? Actually, I think it's actually Councillor Cole's end. Maybe you need to come a little closer to your microphone, Councillor Cole. Will do. You're breaking up a bit. Thank you. The seven days a week aspect of this application. Yep. The condition proposed does not permit seven days a week or external operations. Would you accept that this does mitigate the seven days a week aspect? I would say that um, it ought to, but the experience of the residents has been for some time now, and I, I admit this does not just apply to walkers, there are other businesses up there, but um, there are cars, sorry, there are heavy lorries traveling along Ermine Street, Ramsbury Road, which obviously is the main service road to these uh, sites, uh, at two o'clock, three o'clock, four, five o'clock in the morning, um, they can't always get onto sites because they're locked and uh, therefore they sit outside on the road, sometimes with engines running, that sort of thing. But, you know, they are a nuisance. If 
the mitigation could be absolutely enforced, I think that that might go some way to alleviating some fears. Uh, but um, our experience has been that enforcement of this sort of thing um, is, is just not happening. It won't work. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Councillor Cole, for your questions, Councillor Abbs. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, good evening, uh, Councillor. Um, I just I was having a quick look at the healer online, and it basically says there that this is potentially developable. developable. Um, so when you refer to LAM6 site and the healer and the comments, etc., were you looking at a previous doc, a different version? Or different, uh, could could you tell us where that particular comment came from? Or? Sorry, I was looking at the uh, comment at the end that uh, that, that the um, further investigation of this site was not considered for the HeLa because it was no longer it was not considered sustainable. Okay, um, thank you very much for that. Um, could I take it just just uh, hypothetically, just for the moment, that if um, traffic were to start entering and exit via memory services, that uh, that would relieve almost all of the issues that you, uh, you're you objecting to? Uh, it would certainly, if it came in through uh, memory, services. memory services, when you say memory services, do you mean straight off the motorway? I do indeed. Yeah. So using the motorway slip road, which is forbidden by Highways England. I, I, I said hypothetically, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't say there was a practical, but would, if that were the case. I, I, I'll let this just go a little shorter, Councillor Abbs. It's a little sure. off piece and it's not actually to uh, Mrs. Cocker's presentation, but I know we are going with this and I know others have gone there too. Okay, and uh, and uh, Mr. Goddard is smiling away in the corner there, knowing where you're going with this, but thank you for probing. <laughs> and making us all aware of that. I've still got account for James Cole's hand up. I think he's, uh, he's that's right. Um, otherwise, um, we have no more questions for you, Miss, uh, Mrs. Cocker. Thank you very much uh, for your uh, submission tonight on behalf of Lambourne Parish Council. And thank you for attending the meeting. And uh, thank you for uh, answering um, not very uh, simple questions, but you've, uh, you, you've done the committee very proud this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman. Just wait for Mrs. Cocker to leave us. Let me know, Mr. Oliver. She's gone. Thank you very much. Now we come on to um, the objectors. And we do have a, 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 a submission from the objector. So, uh, uh, Mrs. Legg. Yes, Chairman, just share my screen. So, this is uh, two objectors, Ms. Field and Ms. King. Given there was no pre-public consultation, residents invited Walker's consultant Pegasus in June 2019 to outlay their plans to us. They admitted these would bring no local benefits. Our community fiercely objected and 167 signed a petition against this enormous warehouse proposal by all affected in Shefford Woodlands, Puffley, Goodings, Inholmes, Woodland St Mary's, Rooks Nest, Lambourne Woodlands, Membry. After formal application in December 2015, 55 residents objected versus four genuine locals supporting. It is not the 20 versus, versus 17 story the planning recommendation states. Check its website. Our community then raised thousands to fund external planning and transport consultants who raised key issues with planning, all of which went unanswered. The recommendation proposes 45 new jobs as the exceptional circumstance to develop an AOMB land. Residents support new employment and enterprise to boost the local rural economy, as many small businesses already do at Membury. Yet the applicant's employment history shows just 18% of staff are really local, which would equate to just eight new local jobs, <clears throat> likely minimum wage warehouse workers. This is far from an exceptional reason, giving many compelling arguments against this non-designated -des industrial land development, including destroying breathing space between PEA zones that protects the delicate balance between business and rural environment. AOMB, AOMB vehemently protests at a permanent land loss of considerable size. The scale of this warehouse is massive, which will dominate the landscape with a footprint, footprint of 2.5 acres and a 40 foot high, it will take many decades for new trees to screen. Using Walker's selective, selective traffic forecast, 
The officer ignores TRICS, the standard database for planning similar development. This forecasts 776 additional vehicles a day from this 9 HGV loading bay warehouse on a 14 kilometre round trip to access junction 14 M4 along narrow unclassified and B roads. Environment states extra traffic would adversely impact rural quality and tranquility. Highway state the memory site is unsustainable today. Beyond constant noise, vibrations and risks to those who already live alongside the road, carbon emissions, emissions will rise unnecessarily, severely impacting West Parts Council's climate emergency declaration. Residents are already anxious that HGV traffic, now much increased at night, not least with Royal Mail, UPS and DPT, all of whom are clients of Walkers, who are not a nine to six business, despite their claims. Their publicity boasts 24 seven service and local win weekend shift worker advertisements confirm. This applicant's personal limitation must be vulnerable to future ownership change. While the officer disregards this, how could planning ever enforce capacity growth from new owners? Recognising logistics are growing national business, having already doubled their site, if walkers need further dramatic expansion, alternatives to this already saturated memory site exist elsewhere, as the applicant admits. The alternative of eight new jobs does not justify permanent damage to memory and its rural surrounds. On behalf of Woodlanders Action Group, we urge you to reject this application. Thank you, Mrs. Lagg. Uh, members, do we have any questions of um, Mr. Yeld or Mr. King? We do. Um, Councillor Vickers and Councillor Barnett. Um, Mr. Oliver, would you invite uh, Piers Yeld and Tony King into? They are in with her. Mr. Yeld's in with us. Good. And Mr. King's in with you. Um, if, if you'd like to unmute, gentlemen, and uh, if you'd like to turn your video on, you're very welcome. I can see Thank Mr. you very Yeld. much. It's just Mr. King now. Uh, are you speaking on behalf of Mr. King, Mr. Yell? No, I think uh, Tony King will be, should be joining us any second. Okay. Mr. King, can you hear us? Mr. King, can you hear me? You've never muted. I, I'm, I can hear you now. Okay. Uh, would you like to turn on your video or are you quite happy not to be seen? How do I turn on my video? This is all... Uh, uh, bottom uh, left-hand corner, you no. should see um, video on. The little, there's a cross going through the camera. I think you should see... Uh, you click on that nothing, bottom left. Nothing on my screen. OK, we're quite happy just to hear you. Um, OK. Questions. Good evening, gentlemen. Thank you for joining us and thank you for your submission. Uh, the first uh, question comes from Councillor Vickers. Thank you, Chairman. I'd like to say, I mean, I've got uh, one very specific. Uh, just before you start, Mr. B uh, Councillor Biggers, um, if you'd like to um, just indicate which one of you is going to answer so we don't both jump in at the same time. OK, um, so I think it's up to you, uh, Mr. Yeld, in the first instance, to say whether you will or won't, because we can't see Mr. King. So back to you, uh, Councillor Biggers. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I've got one specific question relating something right at the end of the statement, but uh, I'll wait and see what other members uh, wish to ask. There's a more general question lying in wait for you. Uh, the specific question is, you talk about alternative sites having been looked at. To save me wading through all the various papers, could you um, explain what those alternative sites you would like this application to go to were? Uh, yeah. Yes, I can, Councillor Vickers. Uh, good evening. Um, I'm really referring to a number of letters that came in from the chairman, Mr. Walker, and also their consultants, Pegasus, who talk about sites looked at from Swindon through West Berkshire, and indeed almost a threat, which is if they didn't get permission, they would move to, I think they call it the Golden Triangle in Northamptonshire. All right, thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll let Councillor Barnett go next and maybe come back. I'll just stop there. I've got a Mr. Simon Joyce in the room. Um, I don't have his name down. Mr. Oliver, can you advise me? I can see him in the attendees list, but not in the panellist list. Indeed. I don't think Mr. Joyce should be with us. I think Mr. Joyce... Is, sorry, Mr. Can Chairman. You advise me? Uh, I think Mr. Joyce is on the next application. I think he is. So if we could just have Mr. Joyce back in the waiting room before we go any further, please. Mr. Oliver. I can't actually see him. I can. He's gone. Thank you. Okay, right. thank you. Um, I think, Councillor Vickers, are you, you finished your question. 
I finished a question. I'll, I'll let Mr. Barney, uh, Councillor Barney, go um, next. If I may come back, if uh, yeah, he's not got sure. any questions. Yeah, sure. Councillor Barney. Uh, Chairman, uh, the questions I've got actually, um, uh, and I will address through the chair to Mr. Yeld, although I suspect uh, uh, we need to come back probably on the uh, on the applicant and also um, uh, also uh, Mr. Goddard later. But I seem to be a little bit confused. Uh, you're talking about um, a considerable number of movements, uh, vehicle movements, 776, I think was quoted. Um, I, I, mean, I visited the site yesterday, first time I might add along that road for about 50 years, uh, and I was amazed about the vehicles that were along there and the difficulty in parking and vehicles passing, or at least I'm in difficult passing, especially big vehicles. Where did you actually get those figures that you've quoted us, that assessment? Because we've obviously heard different um, figures given to us already this evening. Yeah. Shall I answer that, Piers? I was going to say, let me pass that on to Tony King, but these are numbers that are actually up on the website uh, under transport. But Tony, why don't you answer that question? I think, I think the, the, the uh, issue here is that the current um, transport analysis has been ba based on the figures which are suppressed by using the output from the current Walker's facility instead of the TRICS database, which gives typical figures from a, um, a development of this size as, as a logistics facility. And I, under, I understand the personal condition. And so the argument is whether the personal condition will ever be impacted by the Walker's operation or whether a new owner would change the operation and therefore achieve the figures that you've quoted in our paper. Uh, I think, or in my view, and, and it was interesting what was said earlier, the applicant is already throwing around numbers of 200 uh, new staff, whereas the application says 45 or 50. That would indicate to me that the, the amount of traffic could indicate fi fivefold. It wouldn't do that. Let's just say it doubles. And there, uh, therefore, sorry, sorry carry on, Piers. But perhaps... To, just to answer the councillor's question, if you turn to the Reading Agricultural Consultants uh, who acted on behalf of Walkers, they specifically mentioned TRICS data and quote in their letter, page four in their first table, 776 vehicles for this particular site, size of site. Uh, and it is from that that our transport consultants returned with an argument against that number, 776, against the then, uh, what I would call, internal number for walkers of 153. So there is a dramatic difference, and we were never asked the question, which is why was the TRICS data not used for this facility? And I believe the answer is because it's under a personal condition. We're not satisfied with that, but that is for you to question. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Barton. Back to you, Councillor Lewis. Yes, uh, I suspect, that, yeah, I had that as um, a specific example of what I think you quote in your statement as key issues that have been unanswered. And um, I wondered what other key issues are, are not answered, because this is often the case with, with complex planning applications. That they, that there's a lot that's in the re officer's report, which you may not have had a personal answer to. But is there anything that we haven't got as members in our committee report which you think is a, a significant issue, key issue, as you call it, that has been unanswered. Well, tread carefully here, Councillor Lucas, because you're asking questions that weren't in the uh, weren't in the submission. But I'll see where this goes. Well, it was in the statement. I'm quoting three I words. Okay, in let's see where it goes. Issues unanswered. Let, let, let me share with um, DK Planning, who uh, were consultants that uh, the residents raised thousands of pounds in order to get a view on this application. They, were, they wrote twice actually to talk about the vulnerability of the personal condition. And that, that has already been raised by the planning officer. But as uh, DK Planning points out, that it is highly vulnerable should there be ownership change and it would be virtually impossible for a council to prevent new owners or lessees of that site to restrict the capacity of those operations. And that for residents is another key issue uh, not least because Chairman Walker, uh, the Chairman of Walkers, excuse me, Philip Walker, uh, in his threat to move the business out, also said 
they would be forced to lease the site, this fully owned site, out to high transport haulage businesses, which would, again, precisely support the use of Trix numbers on the potential of this site to really substantially increase traffic. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Vickers, uh, uh, well, that seemed to be the, the key issue that was unanswered, and we got it answered in our report. Whether we accept that answer or not, I think it's for the debate, Chairman. Indeed, indeed. Um, I have no more hands up. Any more questions of the last call, members? No, I can see no more hands up. Uh, Mr Yeld, Mr King, thank you so much for your uh, written submission uh, and attending the meeting tonight and answering the questions so well. Um, I'll ask Mr Oliver to take you back into the waiting room now. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Mr. King is he's left us now. Um, we have um, no um, information from any supporters, no submission from supporters, but we do have uh, the written submission from uh, the uh, applicant agent. Um, this is Could you read out that for us, please? Yes, Chairman. Share my screen. Wolfe Logistics are grateful to officers for their advice and positive recommendation for approval of the application before committee tonight. The MPFF states that significant weight should be afforded to the need to support economic growth and productivity. The family owned business would like to draw members attention to the following five benefits that the development proposals would deliver. Benefits include the creation of over 200 permanent new local job opportunities, creation of around 180 temporary full-time jobs in construction and in relevant supply chains, safeguarding of existing temporary jobs, enable this reputable long-established company to grow and flourish, thereby benefiting the local economy and community, an aircraft museum building to reflect the site's World War II heritage. We will now provide information on four different aspects before our conclusion, the first of which explains haulage versus e-commerce fulfillment. In contrast to haulage companies, which are all about transporting goods between locations, our e-commerce fulfillment business focuses on the picking and packing thousands of small internet orders. Walker Logistics business is much more labor intensive than haulage companies and generates substantial fewer HGV movements. Landscaping. Our indicative landscape strategy and illustrations have satisfied West Berkshire landscape consultant that the space provided for landscaping offers an excellent opportunity to provide a well-designed scheme that will have some benefit in reinforcing surrounding green infrastructure. Close site. The committee's report in 6.5 states, given the exceptional need for business expansion to support growth and economic development and retain the existing logistics business, on balance, the principle of development should be accepted in the case of this particular application and site. Highways. We responded to objectors highways concern by commissioning an additional study on Airman Street and Ramsbury Road. This showed a minimal impact on projected traffic. Conclusion. We hope members will support our business expansion plans and are happy to answer questions. Thank you very much. Members, do you have any questions of uh, the agent? We do. Uh, Councillor Abbs, you know, they're coming in now. Well done. Um, so, Mr Oliver, if you could invite in, please, we have this evening uh, Philip Walker, the applicant, Jim Tarzi from Pegasus Group, and Ian Southwell from the uh, Vectos Highways, uh, he's a highways consultant. So we'll just wait for them to come in. We've got Mr. Walker, we've got Pegasus Group. And um, we're waiting for Mr. Tarzi. And Mr. <coughs> Southwell. Gentlemen, good evening. Thank you for joining us. Um, we do have some questions for you. Um, Mr. Walker, um, I can't see you, but I'm quite happy that uh, you don't put your, your back with us. Well done, sir. Um, so we've got a full house. Uh, we do have some questions for you. And the first one is from uh, Councillor Abs. Yes, thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, I guess probably a question for yourself, Mr. Walker, if you don't mind. Um, obviously, the e-commerce uh, and the type of uh, system you're building there I'm I'm in the IT industry myself, so I'm surprised when you you're, you're racking up the number of employees. When I compare you against our, an Amazon or anybody else who's basically fully automating everything, uh, how 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 is it that your business is different and demands all the employees? Um, yes, thank you for the question, Councillor. Um, I think it's very important to distinguish the difference between a standard distribution company 
or a transport company or a fulfillment company, which we are. So we're very labor intensive and low on HGV movements. Um, you know, what we tend to do is, is we're processing orders within our warehouse. Um, and unlike the uh, giants of Amazon and so forth, where they can invest um, billions in automation to be able to pick and pack their orders, um, we're a multi-user site. So we have multiple customers here, medium to small customers who have different requirements. And then we do that manually. We don't automate. <clears throat> Larger logistics companies such as Wing Canton, et cetera, tend to operate dedicated sites for their customers. So therefore, that allows a certain amount of automation because you're able to predict what's going on on a, on a seasonal basis and therefore you can automate. We're not that way. We've got lots of, lots of people here, both picking, packing um, and processing orders. So uh, it's very labor intensive. And uh, <clears throat> if I could just put a couple of things through to the members as far as some stats, I won't. I think, I I won't. think we just, just answer the question of this moment in time, if you would, Mr. Walker. Okay. Uh, Councillor, would you like to take that question? Yeah, it was just a supplementary to that, really. Yeah. So I, I just wanted some confirmation in your mind, in your business plan, you see these these hundreds of jobs as sustainable in the mid to long term, not just short term jobs then? Uh, yes, I do. <clears throat> the uh, the data is, is quite out of date because our application and was processed in 2019. Um, as of today, we're 168 full time employees of the site and not the number that was quoted. We have 42 temps as of today, they were here today, and uh, we've created 70 new jobs between 2020 and so far into 2021. Um, we, we have seen an enormous amount of growth um, last year during the pandemic. We didn't close during the pandemic. We continued trading. We didn't furlough anybody. Um, we just kept employing more people and growing the business. Um, the online orders, which we now... Thank you, Mr. Lord, you, but just so you know, you, you more than adequately answered my question. Okay. Mid to long-term jobs. As yep. long as you can um, confirm that, that, that's fine for me. We've been here 22 years. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, yeah. Councillor Abs. Uh, we move on now to Councillor Barnett. Uh, I think uh, uh, Mr. Walker did partially answer it. You are talking about permanent, full-time, long-term jobs. Is that correct? Absolutely correct, so, Councillor. Okay, Absolutely. all right. Can, can I just sort of make a slight observation? And again, the chairman might actually uh, say it's not quite so relevant. Um, we had an earlier uh, a comment made from um, uh, the parish council representative regarding local jobs. And uh, obviously you made it quite clear that you were hoping to uh, be able to uh, escort um, uh, the workforce perhaps from the Swindon area, but clearly that there could be a pool of workers within the uh, Lambourne Valley uh, around the area. Would you encourage uh, local workers as well as uh, bust-in workers? Oh, very much so. <clears throat> we've taken on a lot of local people. Um, certainly in the last year, we've seen a lot more interest with people losing jobs and being furloughed um, and coming to join us. I mean, we currently have, um, in the Downlands, we have two employees. We have 10 in Lambourne with two zero hour contracts. And in the Hungerford area, we have six plus two zero hours. But because we're right on the county uh, boundary here of Wiltshire, you know, we also employ a lot of people from Chilton Folia, Aldbourne, Ramsbury, Baden. Um, so we do employ a lot of local people. We advertise on signage outside the building that locals see. We, we really want as many local people as we can. Thank you, Mr. Walker. Councillor Calder. Thank you, Chairman. Um, thank you, gentlemen, for joining us this evening. My question is going to be quite brutal, so forgive me, but I'm sure you've dealt with worse as businessmen. Um, in the NPPF, it says that we should only build on the AONB in exceptional circumstances. And bearing in mind that there is no guarantee that this would create work for local people, it could create work for people in Swindon or beyond. Why would we want to build on the AONB in West Berkshire when it's, we don't think it's an exceptional circumstance? There's no guarantee the jobs will be for local people. And also the project is not still liable, so we won't be receiving any monies in that regard either. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Councillor. Um, well, yes, it is in the AONB, um, but it's adjacent to our existing site. Um, it's a relatively low value as far as you know, the 
benefits to the AOMB and we would like to stay in this area and expand our business, as I say, that's been here for 22 years. Um, the numbers, we, we can't dictate where people come to work uh, from. Uh, we want them to be local. Um, you know, we don't bus everybody in from Swindon. We'll employ people based on their skill sets and their appetite to work for us. Um, we do believe the creation of a minimum of 200 jobs over the next two to three years uh, does justify the exceptional circumstances of, of allowing us to expand this business that wants to stay in this district. Philip, if I, if I could add to that, because it's, it's a planning question and I'm the planning consultant, you're absolutely right to ask the question. Um, it's, a high, it's a high policy test to pass developing in the AOMB. And um, uh, I think Mr. Till has, has answered it in his presentation to you members, but you know, we, we've, we've looked at the um, relevant guidance in the MPPF. There's three tests we have to meet. One is need, and that's been talked about. One is the scope for going to um, alternative locations outside of the AOMB. And um, we've looked at that um, to accommodate the site on one location and the entire expanded site on one location. And the third one is the, the effect we have on the environment. And, and, and we will have an impact on the environment. We can't build this without impacting on the AOMB. So you have to look at this piece of AOMB. And we've looked carefully as have officers. And when I first looked at this as Walker Logistics Planning Consultant, I looked really, really carefully at this piece of AOMB. Um, and whilst I knew it would be a, a balanced decision, and I made no excuses to that to Mr. Walker, I on balance felt it was a piece of AOMB that could come forward for development in the future. You look at it in terms of the impact and as it was explained to you in the presentation from the planning officer, it is a relatively limited impact from Ramsbury Road. There's no elevated views, there's no long distance views of this site and the site is well contained already, but given the size of the site, there is scope for additional mitigation in terms of landscape planting. And so as with every site, you have to look at it on a site specific basis. And it's on that basis of this site and its characteristics backed by the need that we think it's justifiable. Thank you. Thank you. Members, uh, that is Mr. Tarzi. Am I correct, Jim Tarzi? It, uh, it is, yeah. You, you, you show us uh, Pegasus Group, but that is Mr. Tarzi. Thank you, Mr. Tarzi. Uh, we have another question now from Councillor Benedua. Thank you, Chairman. Good evening, gentlemen. Um, leading on from Councillor Culver's uh, previous question, maybe perhaps you can just expand a little further. Can you, can you explain how this development um, in the OMB and outside a protected employment zone, how that's going to enhance, and enhance is the word here, uh, because it is in, in line with our policy, how it's going to enhance the character and appearance uh, in the area um, uh, in relation, as I say, to policy CS14. Uh, well, in terms of the policy CS14, I mean, the, 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 relevant, the most relevant policy as referred to by Mr. Till is CS9, which talks about when you're going to develop um, on a site, um, you should generally do, generally speaking, combine it to the protected employment area. We're coming outside of the protected employment area. The policy allows that to happen. But as Mr. Till quite rightly pointed out, you then need to look at the compatibility of the use with the surrounding area. Uh, and as I've explained, um, I can't sit here and say we're going to enhance it. We're, going, we're, we're developing a undeveloped greenfield site <laughs> with development. So what you have to ask yourself is whether that impact is going to be harmful or whether that impact can be offset by benefits. And, and you know, that's that's a that's a balanced decision for you as members to make. We we think this this site was part of the former airfield. <laughs> it's quite clearly part of the former airfield. It, it has a very close relationship with existing buildings to the north and south, which are industrial buildings. Yes, we're going to coalesce those and join those with this development, but we can do it in such a manner that we can mitigate it to a large extent. And obviously that mitigation will change over time as landscaping grows. Um, but, but, but in terms of enhancement, I can't say we're going to enhance, we're going to develop it so we can preserve it and we can mitigate it, but we can't enhance. <laughs> Um, because because we're talking development of a logistics warehouse. 
the chairman. Thank you, Professor Benoit. And uh, Councillor Vickers. Chairman, um, uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, I think this is probably for, for, for uh, Mr. Walker as well. Um, benefit number five in the statement says you talked about an aircraft museum building to reflect the site's World War II heritage and it's just been referred to the fact that it's an airfield. Um, as I said in my um, conflict of interest statement at the start of the meeting, which you might have heard, um, there are other airfields um, um, which aspire to be uh, museums in uh, in West Berkshire. And um, I know this, this particular proposal of yours only has about 10% of its footprint as museum, but how important is that to you? And, and uh, would you um, uh, consider locating it elsewhere? And would that, would you th think that would make any difference to you, um, to the, uh, to, to the application that's before us, if that was removed. Um, thank you, Councillor. Um, yeah, yes, it is. It would make a difference to us. Obviously, we own the land here and it's adjacent to the Second World War airfield um, um, that we own part of here at Membry. And we would very much like to have the museum uh, located next to and one was part of the old airfield. It's about the heritage of of one of the Thames Valley airfields. I know about Greenham, I know about Welford and, and, all the, and Ramsbury and the other airfields. Um, my eldest son, one of which is in the business, is also involved in this. And, uh, you know, he's had dialogue with Greenham and with Welford and we cooperate together as volunteers. Um, and we would like to make the site very much um, uh, a history lesson for what went on here during the war. I mean, there were nearly 3,000 men and women based here, a lot of them lost their lives here. Um, and we want to retain that sort of heritage and history and make it available for people to understand what went on here. Um, it was important, Winston Churchill came here. It's, it's a site we ought to preserve. Thank you, Chairman. Chip, I may have a supplementary. Is it fair to say that this isn't really carrying a great deal of weight in terms of the planning balance? It's something that you're more if, if I may say, so for sentimental and, and non-planning reasons, wishing to do rather than a key part of your application. Would that, would that be fair? Um, <clears throat> yes, whether I, should carry, whether I should be allowed to vote in this, because I, I personally don't at the moment see it as particularly important. Um, it, it's not going to be the factor, I can tell you, in, in the way I vote. But um, it is 10% of the footprint and a, a little bit of the scale, which is what we're deciding tonight. Yeah, we, we, we do want to, as part of the memorabilia and, and um, a display within the museum, is, is to put an aircraft in there. And that's why it's the scale it is. It is a C-47 that flew from memory during the war um, that we managed to salvage from the scrapyard. Um, and we would like to put that on display. And that's why we've got the scale. You're right, it's not the most important part of the application. And we've been accused of potentially making the museum part of a a lure as to, to get our planning mm. consent. That's not correct. That's not correct. Right, thank you. That 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 last remark is helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Vickers. And uh, lastly, it looks at Councillor Abs. Yeah, if it would be, I'm hoping you will indulge me here, Chairman. By all means, cut me off if you wish. Um, I, it, because it's not directly in the, 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 the topics, although we've touched on it. And it's, uh, it's um, for the applicant related to the future and uh, e-commerce and, in fact, the environment and going net zero. I haven't heard a single mention of how you can enhance your business to, to help with the future objectives of the country as a whole uh, by doing this route. you want to pass any comment why I have an opportunity? Unless the chairman cuts you off, of course. Um, Jim, could you answer that one, probably? Well, um, <laughs> I mean, if you're talking about the sustainability credentials of the building, um, that will have to be taken seriously. It, it will be a commercial building. So, you know, in line with standards coming out, we will have to meet the relevant BRIAM requirements to the building in terms of, you know, achieving net carbon. But that's the performance of the building and the performance of, um, you know, the energy which it generates. Um, that's slightly different to the sustainability credentials of the location which has been criticised by your transport officers. Um, and if, if that's OK, Mr. Abbott, if I'm interpreting what you've asked correctly, is it OK to answer that question as well? I Well, I, I was curious as to why nobody's mentioning net zero businesses going forward, commercial or otherwise. Um, but 
but I, I, it was an opportunity for you to say something. You've said it. That, that's good enough for me. Um, we'll Thank have you. To move on. I was happy with that question. I think it was worthwhile asking. Uh, Councillor Calder. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, just one more question for me. I think it's laudable that you want to include the museum, but I was just wondering why it's only going to be open 28 days a year. Um, <clears throat> we have to start somewhere. Um, that's twice a month. Um, this is we don't have any public money for this or uh, lottery funded um, income to, to set this up. It will be run by money that we will spend to set up the museum and we will bring volunteers in and rotate with you know, the family opening it. Um, look, we want to make this available to um, veterans, families, visitors, uh, schools, um, any sort of educational um, ideas. So we're, we're not saying 28 days is the only time we'll open. We'll open by invitation and we'll open more days if there's a requirement. It's, it's a minimum, not, not a maximum. Okay, thank you. Mr. Till, uh, can you advise the committee, is this under the 28 day license as a starting point? Um, yes, I believe that the condition recommended uh, in your update sheet yeah. does um, say state a minimum of 28 days. That's right, yeah, yeah under 28 day license. Thank you, just for clarification. Um, Mr. Walker, um, Mr. Southwell, um, I'm sorry we didn't have too many questions for you, sir. And uh, Mr. Uh, Tazi, thank you very much for your uh, contribution this evening and, and well answered some difficult questions, but uh, very useful to the committee. I'll ask Mr. Oliver now to uh, escort you back out to the, uh, the waiting room. Thank you, gentlemen. All gone. Marvellous. Thank you. Um, so that is the application uh, as uh, the submission from our, our applicant. And uh, now we come on to our ward member. Uh, so I'll ask Mr. If he's not in already uh, to invite um, Councillor Wollaston in. Here he comes. I can see I can see your uh, no video and you're muted, Councillor Wollaston. Can you hear me? I can now. My apologies. I do. Okay. Would you like have done that? It should know better. Would Would you like to be seen, sir? Uh, yeah, I would. <laughs> Let me try that one too. There we go. So I've never done it this way before. I was usually just in the meeting. Yeah. Okay. Are you ready? Good evening, Councillor Wollaston. Thank you for joining us. I'll just run through. Um, welcome. Uh, you are uh, making your presentation as the ward member. And uh, as you know, you have five minutes to make your presentation. Uh, should you require it, four minutes, I'll give you notice of one minute to go. And then if you need more time uh, with, with um, uh, 10 seconds to go, I will say in conclusion, and then I will ask you to stop. So when you're ready, um, we'll start. Thank you, Chairman. I fully intended to be on this committee tonight as I've been lobbied by both sides as ward member. I started to write a balanced speech with a view to listening to the evidence and making an objective decision. But as I put together the outline, I rapidly saw that with the notable exception that Walkers are a responsible local employer, I could not see a single local, a logical justification to approve this application. And I therefore stood down so as to be able to fully support the residents in my ward. This industrial estate would never have been allowed but for an, anom an, an anomaly caused by the Second World War and the development of RAF memory. It's in the middle of the countryside with a poor road access and virtually no public transport. It's been allowed to develop over the years haphazardly, in many cases to unsuitable occupiers who have little or no respect for the countryside or local residents. My problem with officers' recommendations to grant consent is I've seen unprecedented levels of local opposition, and I've not had a single resident, apart from the applicants and their advisors, contact me to support the proposal. Lambourne Parish Council have objected in the strongest possible way. Petition of 176 residents have objected, and there have been 56 individual lengths of opposition. It seems to me that the crux of the decision is whether council policy to defend the AMB is overwritten by extraordinary economic need. In terms of West Berkshire, I just do not think it does. Walkers currently employ 164 people, who, according to their literature, sent to you all, 25% live within 10 miles and 18% live within 5 miles. This site is virtually as far west in the district as you can get. The border with Wiltshire is a quarter of a mile to the west and a half mile to the south. So the economic benefit to West Berkshire residents is immediately halved. To put, also put this into perspective, 10 miles gets you to the centre of Swindon. 
Most staff are bussed in from Reading or Swindon, bringing no economic benefit to our district. This would imply that half the 18% quota live in Wiltshire and a mere 15 staff are currently employed within West Berkshire. And the 45 proposed would add perhaps another four. This does not seem to me to be a major economic benefit. This location is just not sustainable for local employment unless people drive. The nearest bus stop is nearly two kilometres away and has two services a day. Ramsey Road has no pavement or streetlights and is very narrow. Nobody in their right minds will walk or cycle down it with so many large HGVs going past. The Northwest Downs AOMB submission is damning, pointing out there are far better locations in Swindon and quite reasonably questioning why a two-site location creates such problems. This seems to have been completely ignored in the recommendation. Walker Logistics say in their application that with few exceptions, they're operating hours are nine to five weekdays only, but they advertise a 24 seven facility to their customers and are currently seeking employees with shifts from seven in the morning until eight in the evening on Sundays and three in the afternoon until midnight weekdays. Walkers say they operate few HGVs. Correct, but sadly their customers who will come to this location operate many, many more using the likes of Royal Mail, DPD, etc. Which brings me on to the highways issues. Whilst highways do not reject, they clearly state that the location is unsustainable and raise concerns about accessibility. For some reason, though, the industry standard tricks measurement of traffic generation has not been used, which would have shown an additional 776 vehicle movements daily over the 14 kilometer round trip to junction 14. A few additional points to make. The draft local plan is not relevant. Business rates are not a planning consideration. Literature showing scale and landscaping is, to be generous, deceptive. This building is 40 foot high and the size of two Wembley football pitches. It is not just going to sink into the hazy background depicted in the literature. It will take decades for tree cover to be provided. The personal consent is a nonsense. If this is approved, can you genuinely see a future application to release it being opposed? The application states 45 new jobs, but this is suddenly escalated to 200, with some, I accept some explanation this evening as to how or why. One minute. My fear is that this application, if approved, will be the thin end of the wedge as two designated employment areas are joined and that further science will be brought forward in the future. Now is the time to draw a line in the sand and say no to further environmentally unfriendly industrial development in this protected rural environment. I strongly urge members to reject the officer's recommendation, which in my view is contrary to policy, and reject this application. Thank you, Councillor Wollaston. Um... Sorry, a bit of a gallop is the only way to get through it. <laughs> yeah, you did well. You had half a minute to go. Good timing. Members, uh, we do have a question from Councillor Vickers. Councillor Vickers. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, Councillor Wollaston, um, I, I, I kind of pricked up my ears when you talked about people. Almost, You almost were claiming that people who live outside of West Berkshire shouldn't have a job in West Berkshire. Just, you know, Membry and indeed the whole of Lambourne is pretty close to the border of West Berkshire. Are you not going to allow anybody who lives in Swindon or Whitworth or outside the border? I think it's a ridiculous argument and the rest of your case is quite good, but please consider uh, that particular point as really not being terribly sensible. I think what you forget is that people employed, say, in Membry who live in Swindon, don't spend the money they earn in, in Membry in the local area, they spend it in Swindon. So the economic benefit to the local area is virtually nil. Apart from business rates. Apart from business Which rates, I, that's not a planning consideration. I think that, well, it's not a planning consideration, but it no. is an economic no, benefit. No, we'll, we'll stop it there now. We don't want to get into a discussion, right. thank you. No. Any more questions, Councillor Vickers? No. No more questions. Okay, Councillor Camp? Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Is it, uh, I'm disappointed in Councillor Vickers taking a line with Councillor Wollaston because I think it was about questions, wasn't it? Not about starting a debate with Indeed. Councillor Wollaston. Can, 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 can we, can we, can we no, not, not have that as a debate? Thank you. Have your question, Councillor Camp? Or Councillor Wollaston? No, Chair, I just wanted to make the point that yeah, I didn't you. think the line of inquiry was the right yeah, one. Thank you. Point of order. Uh, Councillor Cole. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Councillor Wollaston, may I ask the same sort of question of you as I asked of the chairman, sorry, of the representative of the parish council. Um, what do you think about the options for genuine local employment uh, taking up these jobs that are going to be on offer? It's very difficult to answer, as I, was, I think uh, Councillor Cocker said as well, that um, yeah, the, the granular information locally is non-existent. So the only way you can ad ad 
look at it is to say, okay, what's the West Berkshire figures, and then try and analyze that and work it down. But if if you do that, you, it suggests about 100 people unemployed in uh, the Lambourne area, certainly. Um, uh, but as Cats Cogger also said, it's a very transient area in terms of the the racing industry. So it's not an easy answer to make, to be honest. The majority of the racing industry then would not be terribly keen on jobs at this sort of facility? No. no they're, they're, they, they tend to be quite dedicated yeah. people who um, are very much horse orientated rather than just looking for another job for the sake of it. Yeah. Mm. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cole. They are all the questions. Thank you very much, Councillor Wollaston. Thank you, Janet. I'll uh, you very gently back into the waiting room and uh, you can listen to the debate. Thank you, Councillor. Mr. Oliver, if you take uh, Councillor Wollaston out. Thank you very much. Uh, members, it's now time to ask any questions of uh, Mr. Till. Um, we do. Uh, uh, Councillor Abs. Well, I'm, I'm going to ask, I don't need to ask the question to a chair. You will guess what I was going to ask in the first well, place. Off so you go. Could I have the answer? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's why, why can't, why, why don't we, what, what stops us or what stops traffic coming in? And is it literally the law and it's just kind of heads in the sand and that's it? Because it's an entry and an exit on both lanes Mr. Till. on the motorway. Well, it right. might be, in fact, Mr. Mr. Goddard might be best to answer this one, I think. Yeah. He's just looking for his mute button. There we yeah, are. Yeah, of course, as I move to the side of the screen. Uh, Councillor Rabs, this is mentioned, uh, this is always a question that's asked whenever you have a planning application at, at Membry, uh, whether we could ever obtain access from the Membry uh, service area to the Membry Industrial Estate. Um, it, it would be a nice idea, wouldn't it? But unfortunately, Highways England uh, prohibit uh, such accesses uh, onto their highway network. Um, it's their policy. Um, it, it's just not... Um, okay, well, as long as if it's national policy, it's it sounds easy to me, but um, it sounds like it's, it's been national before as well. So thank you very well, much. Mr. Goddard, you answered that. You knew where I'm going with this. Do they allow it off? No. Thank you. You know where I'm looking? Um, Councillor Cole. H. Thank you, Chairman. Um, it's a question for uh, Mr. Till. I don't know whether you'll um, be able to provide me with the answer, but um, Councillor Wollaston was very dismissive of the emerging local plan in as much as he um, implied that it was irrelevant with regard to the consideration of this application. My understanding is that when local plans are at the development stage, uh, increasing weight is given to them uh, dependent on how far along the plan is in its development. Um, at the moment, the local plan is scheduled to go out uh, for final Regulation 19 consultation uh, and then get, be submitted to, for, uh, to the inspectorate uh, in the summertime. So has any weight been given uh, by officers to the emerging, emerging uh, draft local plan? Well, uh, Councillor Cole, that's a very good question, and uh, um, I'm glad you asked it. Um, it. It's a difficult one as well. Um, the planning policy consultation response is probably the best starting point um, in, in terms of this. Um, and the planning policy officer has given quite a nuanced response. So um, in terms of attributing weight to the emerging local plan policy itself, you're quite correct. It gathers weight over time and depending on the stage of preparation. And um, at present, uh, the policy officer's view is that the emerging policy should be given limited weight. But the nuance on that is that there is a recognised need for industrial development um, in the district um, and for that to be accommodated um, in industrial employment areas. Um, memory being an existing protected employment area um, is an area that is um, under consideration um, and it may be allocated for further development. Um, 
But in the meantime, um, the requirements of policy that we have um, state that uh, they direct um, industrial employment uses um, towards the protected employment area, but they do allow for consideration of land alongside um, those areas, subject to the considerations that I, I um, referred to earlier in terms of the um, location um, and its compatibility with surrounding uses, its uh, sustainability, etc. Um, so um, the main consideration is under current policy, but there is a limited weight to be attached to the fact that this site is being considered as part of a wider allocation for industrial development. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So could I just have a, a question of a clarification, uh, Mr. Till? So uh, just to confirm that you have taken into account the fact that in the uh, heel of the Housing and Economic Land Availability Assessment, this site is uh, listed as potentially developable, and you have taken that into account when coming to your uh, conclusion and recommendation. Yes, Councillor Cole, I am. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cole. Uh, Councillor Vickers. Thank you, Chairman. My question is really to Mr Goddard, and it's, it's uh, about this argument of sustainability of transport. Um, impacts. Um, we, we are moving steadily, quite rapidly indeed, towards um, electric um, powers, in other words, not using carbon fuels, and so therefore potentially at least not adding so much to the, um, the carbon footprint of any development, however much it generates transport um, travel needs. So what sort of weight do you attach to this trend? Uh, is it to, you know, is it significantly reducing the um, the fact that uh, because this is in the countryside and devoid of any public transport links, etc., it is unsustainable? If, shall we say, in 20 years' time, everybody was driving an electric vehicle, but nothing else had changed, would this be a more sustainable application before us? Well, that is a good question. Of course, it's UK government policy that um, um, all uh, fossil fuel and hybrid cars will no longer be manufactured after 2035. Um, at the moment, your policies uh, are, are not, and national policies are not um, keeping up with the provision of electric cars. Obviously, the electric car market is increasing, uh, but not enough yet to change policy. I suppose um, currently you could also argue that uh, many electric cars, um, they still need to be charged. And therefore that still takes power that's probably from um, the burning of fossil fuels to produce. And those then cars would need to be then uh, used to travel to what, what is an unsustainable location. Um, it's a good question. Um, but I don't think policy-wise uh, there is sufficient weight within to uh, take account of, a, of electric vehicles, except to do everything that we can to encourage their use. Thank you. That's all to my question, I think. Thank you, Councillor Vickers. Um, where are we now? Um, I think it's James Cole, Councillor James Cole. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, may I have a couple of quick questions? Yes. For Mr. Till, um, the, the 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Mondays to Fridays, you imply in the report that this is not to the detriment of residents. I don't take an issue with that. Are you comfortable with that statement? In terms yes. Of noise. Yes. <laughs> in terms of traffic noise, you are comfortable with that statement. Councillor Cole, um, I should point out the context of this site, which is in the middle of um, a um, couple of protected employment areas with um, a substantial number of um, currently uncontrolled industrial uses uh, with numerous vehicle movements associated with them. Um, Many of those businesses are operating around the clock, and you've heard from objectors 
um, in respect of their concerns um, with disruption that occurs um, from those vehicle movements. Um, it, it's fairly standard planning practice um, where considering site operating hours, for instance, to allow a starting time at 7 a.m. So I'm satisfied that 7 a.m. is not disruptive hours in terms of the context of this particular site in amongst other industrial areas with uncontrolled uses, um, and in terms of what we would ordinarily consider reasonable for planning purposes. Um, similarly, 8 p.m., I do not consider to be unreasonable in context of those two matters. Thank you, Mr. Till. Um, you. I understand that, um, but it is specified in terms of traffic noise. My second question goes to Mr. Goddard. Um, been trying to get some sort of feel for traffic flows. Um, Mr. Goddard, would it be reasonable to make some sort of comparison to the B4000 just a little bit further down, um, where we've seen 1999, 3,324 hours, not much rise, 2016, 4,800 odd, 24 hours, 2018, 20,800, and a guess of maybe 25,000 a day at the moment, going through Wickham on the B1000. Sort of increase, is that sort of increase fair to think about as being certainly in part due to this well memory and going to be affected by this application if it goes through? You're muted, Mr. Goddard. Thank you. Chairman, it's it's I suspect that some of the traffic increase is, is from Membry, um, but it's it's difficult to prove it's entirely from Membry. It may be from increased in development in Lambourne. Um, I think that's the best I can I can answer. As I said, there certainly is a has been a trend, a steady increase, certainly in car traffic on the B4000 over the last sort of 12 years. Um, and, and yes, I suspect we, things, uh, proposals keep being approved at Membry. So I think it's your, your question is, it, it must be logical that some of that increase uh, must be from Membry. Um, but it's difficult to quantity, quantify how much it is from Membry without sort of a lot more further uh, traffic surveys and traffic data. Um, sorry, I can't answer your question any sort of better than that. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Barnett. Well, it was really on the back of what uh, Councillor James Coles uh, just mentioned. I mean, I was going to ask the question that um, the A4000, sorry, the B4000 has been subject to so many discussions over usage and type of vehicles and access over many and many a year, even the first two times I was on the council. Um, and uh, is there any likelihood of any restriction regarding uh, thorough uh, traffic because uh, I was led to believe it's really only supposed to be used for HGVs on access and, and I was just thinking that the, the, the section further north of, of the, um, the site uh, is not the best of uh, going towards Baden. Um, is there any likelihood of any restrictions being imposed that uh, it will only be a certain type of vehicle coming off the a motorway network that can access this particular site. Chairman, I'm not, I'm not aware of any proposals for such measures. Uh, when we seek to restrict HGVs on certain roads for access, it's always very difficult to prove where those HGVs are going to and from. Um, from our experience providing uh, HGV restrictions on, on routes, um, I think it helps, um, but it's always difficult to prove where they're going to and from. Um, the, the local community, if they wish to pursue that, um, I don't think it's for this, this planning application um, for that to happen, 
my advice would be that they would need to contact colleagues in the uh, traffic and road safety team. Thank you. Members, that concludes all our questions of the officers. Um, I think uh, without asking Mr. Goddard, he's, uh, he's been uh, well targeted tonight with, uh, with questions uh, in this session. So uh, we now move on to the debate and uh, straight away, uh, Councillor Abbs has come in. Thank you, Councillor Abbs. So we're away with the debate. Yeah, I thought we'd kick off, Chairman. I, I have to say, um, I've, I've pinged and ponged throughout the whole debate about whether I, sh I would be in favour or not. I, I think the, the applicant could have done many things to improve their application to make it more palatable, um, whether uh, the slightest mention of some kind of net zero de uh, warehouse development or, or something. Um, despite um, what he said about the jobs being permanent, um, I, I'm not seeing that trend anywhere else in the, the pick and pack um, industries. Um, I mean, the big guys have gone there first, but that will filter down with time. So I, the permanence of the job, I, I'm, I'm a little worried about. Um, in terms of the location itself, um, I actually was fairly comfortable. If we are going to be able to build anywhere in the AONV, um, this has got to be potentially one of them. And what concerns me more is that um, uh, LAM6 specifically says that it's potentially development, developable and specifically says that it's <laughs> developable for the very purpose of um, storage and distribution. So that's in the, the HELA so far. So we could easily find ourselves in uh, less than a year's time where in fact this is in the local plan and uh, we may have lost um, it, the employment opportunity, um, but we get some uh, less, less concerned, uh, shall we say, um, uh, uptake uh, in the same area. And we will not be able to stop it because um, the local plan will be saying, yes, this is now a, lo a local employment area. And yes, it's uh, is super suitable for storage and distribution. Quite why it's in the HeLa is another debate as suitable if based on what we've all said this evening. So as you can see, I'm completely conflicted <laughs> about which way to, to vote here this evening. So I look forward to the rest of the debate. Thank you. And uh, Councillor Camp. Uh, thank you, Chair. Well, I think when I study the extensive documents and quite complicated application attached to this, I was looking for, I was looking for a, a number of things, one of which was whether there were Bear in mind this is an AONB, whether there is an exceptional reason to consider this as being a thing that, that we should be doing. Um, I was quite compelled looking first of all at the economic argument, or economic benefit by Councillor Wollaston's uh, quite detailed statistical analysis of the fact that uh, the employment directly relevant to West Berkshire was tiny, only 15 people potentially at the present moment. So it didn't feel to me as though there was a massively compelling, I mean, if there's a, a thousand strong factory being moved to the, to the to West Berkshire, that would have been compelling to me. A handful of people employed at a site on the fringe of the, of the district doesn't feel that compelling. In terms of the, the second thing I looked at was whether the, uh, this sort of development would show appropriate respect for the local community. And I, I must say that the, the range and variance of the, uh, of the numbers relating to transport and travel don't give me a lot of confidence that this is going to be a great benefit to the you know, relatively fragile local community around, around this area. But I think the thing that finally concluded it for me was looking at uh, First of all, at page 41, which uh, Councillor Hillary Cole referred to in saying that uh, really was the policy that's under review, the local plan review, being considered by the planning officers. I think she was looking at a rather more positive light than I was, but by saying, you know, the planning officer, I think, responded that we couldn't assume that would permit further development. Um, I might would take the other view and say it could well come out the other way and actually say there shouldn't be further development. And I think that linked in very neatly with me to Paris 16 uh, on page 45, uh, where the conclusion of the highways officer is, uh, I conclude no objection is raised by highways on traffic grounds. However, objection could be raised, raised by the highways authority on sustainability grounds. It's been the policy of the highways development control for some time to resist expansion of the Membry industrial estate due to how unsustainable the location is. 
it could be considered that if the climate emergency be taken seriously, this proposal should be resisted. And I think for me, that really killed it. I, I will be voting against uh, this outline consent. Thank you, Councillor Kant. Councillor Dickers. Thank you, Chairman. Because um, it's slightly changed for me in that this is now not going to be called in if we um, uh, go along with officer's recommendation. It was going to be quite an easy decision. Otherwise, we could... We could um, refuse it and well of course the applicant can appeal or we can we can go with officers and it'll have to be looked at again but i'm you know i'm going to find it really difficult to know which way to vote um i did go and do my usual ramble around the area on sunday um there weren't any vehicles moving around in the industrial area where i parked so it does look as though most employers do take sunday off uh, and there isn't much traffic movement around there in fact, there, were, there was a cycle race going on, I think, actually, when I was there. Um, I didn't see that the, um, the landscape impact was huge, certainly not permanent. There are some very substantial um, tree um, lines that have obviously been planted to screen um, other existing areas. I mean, to, to call this whole um, protective employment area or group of little protected employment areas an anomaly, I think is... It's a bit, bit of a slap in the face for planning policy. It is, or either side of it are, PEAs. And it does carry some weight, we've been told, that this particular site will be a PEA. So therefore, if it goes through the planning process, um, as it currently stands, you could have any kind of um, warehouse distribution centre, not a local firm, a well-established local firm trying to grow, um, I do come back to the point about the fact that it's not all West Berkshire people that will be employed here. It could still be very local. Baden, Ramsbury, Aldbourne, they're all very local to Membry, whether they're in West Berkshire or not. I don't buy the argument that just because they're not residents of West Berkshire, uh, it's therefore not local employment. Um, and any uh, employer there, if it is a PAE, PEA, is going to be needing employees. So, I mean, you know, I'm sorry for, for Paul Goddard. I've got a lot of time for most of what he says most of the time. But if you've got a PEA in the middle of an AOMB with no public transport links, you are going to inevitably attract people to go to work and back home again by car. Uh, and yes, you can't enforce a private bus service. So I'm coming round to, I think, the way that Councillor Abbas is, is coming round. It's, it's hard to actually refuse this, um, taking everything into account. But it is finely balanced, and I'll wait to hear what others have to say. Thank you for that contribution, Councillor Vickers. Right. Um, Councillor James Cole. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm now moving towards Councillor Kant's view. Um, I feel that we are meant to protect the AOMB, and I don't think that the economic argument that's been put forward tonight is strong enough to go against that in the planning balance. And that's what the documentation that we were presented with majors on. Yes, there are things like um, planting trees, but you know, a building that size, you want to plant trees, and I am, as you know, somewhat familiar, familiar with this idea. Um, I'm afraid that I'll probably be dead by the time those trees have really taken effect. Uh, it, it, it's a long term thing. Um, and I'm really uncomfortable with the unsustainability traffic wise. Thank you. Councillor Barnett. Chairman, members. Um, I mean, initially, uh, when I was reading through the papers, um, you know, I, I was obviously uh, very, very much um, in favour of, uh, of this. I, I saw it as a uh, as a scheme which would um, encourage um, a local um, business person to give the opportunity to expand 
uh, to give the opportunity for employment. And as what Councillor Vickers has, has said, um, you know, there's a lot of small villages that um, the, the, the workforce in those villages probably struggling and find that uh, they might even be happy to own a motorbike or a bicycle. So it wouldn't necessarily use a car to actually get to this site. And, um, you know, the site is obviously increased over the years. I knew it initially. In fact, I, I learned my, uh, my wife to drive on that uh, site along there. So I, I knew it well the years and years ago, obviously not recently. Um, but there is a certain employers that have located there and found it's a, a great benefit um, to be in that position. Um, so, you know, initially I felt very much inclined to uh, support uh, what the officers were promoting. Um, but I've obviously had reservations since I've been listening to the debate. And uh, I think we've had some very strong uh, arguments against it put forward today, tonight. Uh, and therefore, I'm, I have to say, I am actually sitting on the fence at this moment in time. Um, so, you know, even at this late juncture, I'm still a little bit uncertain exactly which way I'm going to vote. Thank you. Councillor Hillary Cole. Thank you, Chairman. Um, this determination, I think, hinges on uh, whether uh, an exceptional need has been demonstrated. Uh, currently, to aid recovery following uh, COVID, uh, planning balance is in favour of economic, uh, the economic benefit to the district. And despite what people have said about uh, local people for jobs, we have to bear in mind that district-wide, 50% of our employees commute into the district and 50% commute out. Um, and so I think that is a, a, a bit of a red herring where this is concerned. Uh, looking at the comments the AOMB um, uh, mentioned, I think they solely, the AOMB quite rightly solely focus on the impact of the AOMB, but their comment shows very little understanding of the economic benefits uh, because they seem to ignore the MPPF, uh, which does state uh, support for economic growth and productivity. The site is adjacent to a protected employment area, and we have heard uh, that there is going to be a need uh, to extend designated employment areas in the new local plan. And this is shown in the HELA, uh, and LAM6, uh, LAM16, is, is shown as potentially developable. And this is the site we're talking about this evening. Um, I understand the sustainability issues, but as far as I'm concerned, it's a bit of a weak argument because this site is adjacent to a protected employment area, which has been there for a number of years. So, um, People are already travelling in and out to that area. So I'm planning policy, uh, and I know members know I support our planning policies very, very strongly. But planning policy is giving a very balanced view on this application. And therefore, I support officer recommendation because I don't believe that it is so stringently against policies that I can um, vote against it. So, Chairman, I would propose... Uh, that we accept officer recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Members, do I have a second? We do, Councillor Abbs. Thank you. Um, I think, Councillor Abbs, you, you would like to come in on the debate. Yeah, yeah, well, actually, I was going to propose, uh, having come off the fence, having listened to enough debate, <laughs> but uh, Councillor Hillary uh, Cole got there before me, so uh, congratulations. Um, it is a very fine, I will add to Linda, it is a very fair, finely balanced argument, this. And I think we need to think long and hard about conditions that we can put around it to try and extract some benefit from allowing this to go. The economic benefit, um, I think, will be there. The size of the economic benefit is probably what we're, uh, what we're debating. The fact that it's a, a, local, uh, uh, a local company really sways me a, a lot the fact that there are a few meters away uh, we've not talked about what happens to the current facility etc cetera, etc cetera, but um um it, yeah there are lots of other businesses there that are uncontrolled by the sounds of it so you know we're trying to close the the door after the horse has bolted somewhat and uh, there's some national um kind of things that we're lobbying we could do to ease everybody's concerns but i realize that's not for, for this evening so 
on balance, um, the kind of things I'd like to, to get some advice on, can we, what can we condition? Well, not forgetting this yeah. is outline, and Mr. Till... Um, no, exactly what, outline, but can we start throwing some stuff in, even at this stage, that we, you know, we're willing to do outline if you can come forward with a, z a net zero commercial development for us, if you, and so on and so on. Can we do those type of things? Mr. Till. Chairman, thank you. Um, thank you, Councillor Abs. Um, can I point you in the direction as a starting point for this uh, discussion of um, conditions eight and nine um, of the recommended conditions on page 60, um, which are for uh, BRIAM. Um, now, earlier on, it was referred to as BRIAM as a construction standard, but BRIAM is a little bit more holistic than a construction standard. Um, and um, takes into account um, an awful lot of um, matters like sourcing of materials and um, various different sustainable uh, measures uh, to be taken in the development of the site. And then condition nine, um, the council's policy CS15 requires um, zero carbon provision. Um, so condition nine, um, uh, requires um, details to be submitted and approved as to how compliance with that zero carbon standard would be achieved. Um, now, this uh, is... Simon, um, thank you very much. That's really oh, appreciated. You. you pointed me there that uh, I would still like us to go further, though, because that's the building. Uh, we're not taking... We need, a, we need a positive outcome from this. And the net zero is once it's operating... But you know we're, we we assume like uh, Mr. Uh, sorry Councillor Vick has mentioned that we'll have lots of electric vehicles in 10, 15, 20 years time. Are we pro are we provisioning enough to be able to kind of charge the, those vehicles on site to maybe add power to the? Well, that's a lot of roof space there. You know, will it be? Can we do more? I don't know. What can we do over and beyond what I'm reading already? Well, um, I, I have missed that. So thank you. Councillor Abs, thank you. Um, now, in, in this particular respect, um, we have to draw a distinction between conditions of an outline and a reserve matters planning commission. Um, so looking at detailed design and layout matters, which would incorporate things like parking provision and electric vehicle charging provision, um, that's where you could look at starting to apply conditions that really got into um, sustainability. But can I recommend... Um, that members might wish to consider an informative um, that um, highlights the importance um, of making sub, um, submissions um, in respect of um, how the building um, will seek to further the sustainability aims of the district um, and officers can um, put together a suitably worded informative to point um, the applicant in that direction. Um, I, 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 yeah, thanks for that, uh, Mr. Till. Uh, I, I, I'm coming in where uh, Councillor James Cole came in, and uh, I don't know what we can do with regard to landscaping. There are, there are concerns, obviously, with regards to uh, its visual aspect, and I take on board what Councillor Cole says. It takes an awful long time uh, to get landscaping that's going to hide a, a, effectively an aircraft hangar. Um, is there anything at this stage outline we can do with regards to another informative to say, as we've had another application, that there's a minimum height we start off with, we get 10 years under our belt uh, with regards, to, I mean, there's a lot of trees there and it's going to be quite expensive if we do it, but it does help with the landscaping and, uh, and the camouflage and as it were of this facility. Can you help me with that? Um, thank you, Councillor Hooker. Um, the applicants made quite a commitment to uh, provision of landscaping and has drawn attention to his existing site in terms of the long-term landscape maintenance that he's undertaken there. Um, the, in terms of an informative, I wouldn't recommend anything at this particular stage because landscaping is a reserve matter, but the documents supporting the application already um, uh, highlight an understanding of the need for a long-term strategy, in particular the Landscape Visual Impact Assessment mm -hmm. document. Um, and um, certainly um, officers understand that if approved, the landscaping of this site will need to be very sensitively designed. Mm. Yeah, I think James, James, Councillor, James Cole, and, and my concern is 
uh, you mentioned long term, but we don't want long term to a conclusion. We'd like a long, you know, a shorter term uh, to get this landscaping in place. I think that, that that's what we're looking for. But that's for another day. But uh, as long as uh, you've cleared my point that maybe there's nothing at this moment in time that we can actually do. Councillor Vickers. Thank you, Chairman. Um, because on this very point, when, when I was visiting the site on Sunday, it was very clear to me that um, it's only really from the actual um, Ramsbury Road that it, it, it hits you, it's going to hit you in the face. And, and it, it, it did occur to me that if you had a fast growing screen of trees quite close to the road, it would very quick, it would reasonably quickly obscure this very large warehouse. Uh, I'm not saying that's the beginning and end of the landscaping scheme, but I think you could significantly um, screen this um, this building from that one direction that matters. Because from every other direction, as I say, I, I walk all around the other three sides from about a mile away, and there's nowhere that you could see this building from other directions besides that. Thank you. Any, any more contributions on to consideration as asked by Councillor Abs of consideration of conditions? We're quite happy. Good, okay. Um, so I do have a proposer, Councillor Hilary Cole, and I do have a second, uh, Councillor Abs. I'll now go to uh, Mr. Till and uh, Mrs. Armour just to um, collate, if we can, um, the, the additional conditions we've uh, pointed out to us conditions eight and nine on page 60 of our uh, of our papers and uh, the importance of Briam of this built building uh, and uh, we've also been advised maybe of a, an informative uh, uh, submission in regard to uh, how the building might support any sustainability um, Mr Till did you pick any more up and uh, Mrs Armour I think they were the two uh, obviously there is a concern over landscaping to be looked at another time um, uh, Chairman, uh, from my perspective, it's important that members note that um, the conditions are as recommended in both the report and the update sheet. Yes, thank you. It covers that, does it? I, I was just trying to make sure that we had embraced uh, Councillor Abs's concern that this is our opportunity, uh, should it go this way, that we do as much as we can to safeguard not only the residents, but uh, the well-being generally of that area. So. Um, I'm going to ask for this uh, vote to take place now. The recommendation is, as it stands, for the head of planning in country, so I'd be authorised to uh, grant this uh, planning application at uh, uh, the land south of Tower Works. Uh, Mrs Armour, would you carry out the uh, vote for me, please? I would do, but Councillor Vickers has got his hand up, so I don't know if that's do. an is error that... or... Oh, OK, I, I, I Please put it down there. Thank you. I thought he that has. Yeah, thank you. Great. Um, so this is in accordance with what Councillor Hook has just read out for um, permission. So Councillor Abs. For. Councillor Barnett. For. Councillor Bennyworth. Against. Councillor Kant. Against. Councillor Hilary Cole. For. Councillor James Cole. Against. Councillor Colber. Against. Councillor Vickers. Sorry, you're on mute. Four. Councillor Hooker. Four. So that's carried five four. Thank you very much. Uh, therefore, this application is approved. Members, that is a typical example why planning applications come to this committee. That is how finely balanced it is. And I think that was a very good debate. And um, we, whichever side of the fence we sit on, um, We'll like make our own conclusions to whether it was the right one. But this committee has looked at it and found that it is approved. Um, I did suggest uh, at the start that um, I would offer a comfort bait. We've been going now uh, up a six, up a seven, up a state, two and a half hours. Is it up a six, up a seven? Up a, oh, I can't believe it's two and a half hours. Um, I'm going to ask, hands up, would you like a comfort break and get a cup of water? One, two, three, four, five, I think. Six, we're in. Um, Mr. Oliver, <laughs> you put up the appropriate signage and uh, I'll see you all back here at, shall we say, 10 past nine.
Mr. Oliver, if we can start, please. Thank you. Councillor Bennyworth, Councillor Kant, if you could put your uh, video on, please, if you're there. Welcome back, Councillor Count, and welcome back, Councillor Bennyworth. I think we are all now in house, uh, all rehydrated and comfortable. Um, Mrs. Armour, we are now at ten past nine. We have one more application. Um, can you remind me? Is it ten or ten thirty? I mean, it's ten o'clock unless members decide to go to half ten. But to make that decision, there you have to be confident you are going to complete the application. That was my question. I'm looking for some uh, advice here. We have one application, uh, Councillor Cole. This is a, a this is a, a delegated site in the DPD. Um, we have half an hour before we take a vote on whether we're going to go past ten o'clock. Councillor Cole. Uh, Chairman, I, I can't imagine this application taking too long. To be perfectly frank. Thank you. I agree. I think we'll be finished by 10 o'clock. Thank you. I got a nod of uh, acceptance from Councillor Kant as well. Therefore, our third and final application the scene thing is application number 20 stroke 00192. This is the land at uh, the end of Charlotte Close in Hermitage at Thap Thatcham. And this is for the erection of 16 dwellings. And as I've said, it is one of our uh, delegated sites in the DPD. This has come to committee due to uh, more than 10 letters of objection. And uh, Mr. Uh, Masiwa uh, will make the presentation. Uh, Mr. Masiwa. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> um, I'll just uh, share my screen. Thank you. Thank you. Is that clear to everyone? That's clear. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we, we do have an update sheet, um, which um, uh, was submitted today. It, it, uh, it corrects uh, a sentence at uh, section 6.41. Um, there is a reference to 11 plots. Um, it, it should actually state 16 plots. Uh, and also in the update sheet, um, it's uh, included is a letter sent to planning, head of planning uh, by the Heritage Parish Council. Um, after um, that additional information, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, the application is still recommended for approval. Um, the, this application seeks full planning permission uh, for the erection of 16 dwellings and associated landscape. Um, there are no objections from statutory consultees and conditions are recommended at section 8.3 of the report. Uh, representations have been received from 20 contributors in objection uh, and one impartial contributor. Uh, the application has been referred to the planning committee uh, due to, to more than 10 letters uh, of objection. Um, a summary of the representations are given at section four of the report. Um, and as indicated, the officer recommendation is um, for approval. Uh, the site is an over, overgrown greenfield site in the service village of Hermitage. Uh, it's within the net Northwest Down AONB. Um, it lies north of Station Road, um, and this is Station Road there. Um, the application site abuts a field in pasture to the east uh, and the rear gardens of the White Horse Public House to the north, which is shown there. Um, and to the west, the site abuts number two Charlotte Close uh, and the side and rear uh, of number four Charlotte Close. There is an existing gated access of Charlotte Close, which is a, uh, a short uh, cul-de-sac uh, on the east side of Ubury Road, which is the village spinal road. 
Um, the site also shares the western boundary with the new development uh, under construction for a convenience store, um, four apartments uh, and four dwellings. Um, to the northeast lies the approved outline scheme for up to 21 dwellings at the old farmhouse. Um, and that is also uh, an allocated um, housing site. Um, the proposed footwork network will link into the adjacent uh, housing site as well. Um, the local topography is such that ground levels rise gently from the southwest towards the north. Towards the north. Um, the adjacent station roads um, along the southern boundary uh, has been built at a raised level. Uh, the site is located within, uh, partly within a, a critical drainage area, which is the blue area on the constraints map, uh, this one here. Uh, there are many existing trees on the site, including mature um, specimens, situated primarily around the periphery of the site. Um, the four large mature trees on the site were felled in 2016, which resulted in um, the, the, the site being um, the subject of uh, an area tree preservation order designation, uh, a TPO. Um, the TPO was subsequently confirmed on individual trees to the east, which is the red circles shown on the plan on the presentation, uh, and also um, the group uh, of trees along the southern side boundary along Station Road, which is the green hatched area. Policy uh, HSA 24 uh, of the Housing Site Allocations DPD is the site specific policy allocating the application site for housing. The full policy is set out in the report and allocates approximately 15 dwellings on the site. Um, the red line application site is in keeping with the new settlement boundary as redrawn by the, by the housing site allocations policy. As such, Mr. Chairman, the principle of new residential development is acceptable on this site. Um, the 16 plots will all have um, sufficient um, garden sizes uh, to comply with the council's guidance. Um, as um, indicated in the report, uh, a 2017 application was refused by the council for 37 dwellings. Um, and uh, this was subsequently appealed, uh, and it appealed the scheme was amended to 36 dwellings, uh, but it was subsequently dismissed by the planning inspector. Um, the appeal decision was attached to the report pack. The dwellings have been designed such that their layout size scale uh, does not appear out of context in relation to adjacent properties to the north and west or within the settlement of Hermitage. The height of the dwellings is in keeping with the height of the nearest dwellings and the proposed dwellings will, will merge well with the existing uh, properties. The proposed facades uh, architectural detailing have been amended to include more uh, architectural detailing um, the buildings on plots one and seven have been modified as key landmark buildings um, to, to include further detailing. Public spaces are, are overlooked by the dwellings and so there is a good level of natural surveillance onto public open spaces and footpaths. The proposed layout has largely been informed by the large trees um, I referred to earlier which are protected trees along the southern and eastern boundaries of the site. The built form would be located away from the boundaries, which is welcome and is acceptable, which is something that was uh, objected on, on the uh, appeal scheme. The public open space requirement has been met. Um, the policy requires between 0.12 to 0.17 hectares for this number of dwellings. Um, and I think the public open space provision is um, at about 0.15. Um, it also incorporates um, a, a local um, area of play, um, which will also be secured uh, under a section 106 legal agreement. Um, the local um, area of play LIP 
is located um, to the south um, southeast corner, um, just there. Um, the assessment or neighboring amenity is provided in the report and it is considered the design and layout sufficiently protects the immediate neighboring properties. As part of the application scheme, it is proposed to include 40% of dwellings as affordable housing, uh, which is a total of six units. Uh, and this will be uh, paper ported around the site in accordance with policy CS6 of the core strategy. The provision is shown on the affordable housing plan um, shown on the screen and in the committee report pack. Um, as, as indicated, the site is in the AONB. Um, we have consulted the landscape uh, consultant um, and following um, numerous amendments, um, they have no objections on the current scheme. There are no other objections from the tree officer. Um, the education service has raised no objection, indicating that the impact from the proposed development will be uh, met by seal contributions. Um, in terms of highways, um, the planning application was submitted with transport statement, which has been reviewed by the highway authority and highway officer, and they have no objection to the final scheme um, subject to the recommended conditions. Um, as indicated, um, they, they, there are no other um, uh, concerns from, um, from the other consultees, including the ecologist who was re uh, recommended um, uh, conditions. Um, these slides are just going to show quickly the, um, the, the site photographs, which are included in the pack. Um, but yes, this is this, the, the view from Newbury Road um, of Charlotte Close looking towards the site, and this is the proposed access. Um, this is the gated access onto the site from Charlotte Close. Um, this view shows the, the co-op development, which is under construction. Um, and this photograph is taken from the access uh, of Charlotte Close. Um, this is a view of number four Charlotte Close from within the site. Um, this view is from Station Road, um, looking towards the proposed pedestrian crossing, which will be um, ab about this point. Um, again, the southern boundary um, showing the proposed uh, pedestrian crossing. Uh, this is a view looking east towards the, the boundary uh, and the, 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 the um, trees subject to a tree protection order. Um, again, looking east um, and the condition of the site. Um, this is the southern boundary along Station Road towards Newbury Road, uh, which shows the trees protected by a group T TPO. Um, again, a view looking north towards um, the co-op and number two, Charlotte Close. Um, again, a um, view through the site looking north um, and the co-op under construction, um, similar um, sort. The, this is an image from Station Road looking uh, towards the eastern boundary. Um, and looking, uh, this sort of takes us to Hermitage Green, which is a, a recent um, residential development, uh, as, as stated earlier. Um, examples of um, just local vernacular designs. This is along Newbury Road. Um, and again, uh, this is uh, number one, Charlotte Close, um, showing the, um, a, a, an example of local um, dwellings. Um, Officers therefore recommend uh, that the application is approved subject to the heads of terms for a section 106 legal agreement uh, at section 8.2 uh, and the schedule of conditions um, are listed at section 8.3. Um, that's the end of the presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Masiwa. Mr. Goddard, any observations on the uh, highways issues on this one, please? Thank you, Chairman. Um, the highway section of the report is found on page 90 uh, of your PACs. As uh, stated by Mr. Masawi, uh, this is a, a, an allocated site in the Housing Site Allocations DPD, uh, allocated for 15 dwellings, uh, 16 are proposed, 
Uh, vehicular access is formed onto Charlotte Close as per the uh, uh, SPD uh, with pedestrian cycle routes onto the station road to the south and the allocated site at the old farmhouse uh, to the north. The parking and site layout is considered to be uh, acceptable. There is much concern locally, as always, uh, with this proposal uh, regarding the nearby B4009 uh, Price Court Road Station Road mini roundabout. Um, this has been subject to extensive uh, traffic modelling uh, that's been done by um, Arcade Junction 9 software, uh, not only for this planning application, but also the previous planning application that was for 37 dwellings uh, that was refused and dismissed at appeal. Uh, the modelling also includes the allocated housing site to the north of the old farmhouse and the recently approved scheme, uh, uh, cooperative store and residential development just to the north. Um, the junction was found to be uh, fairly near to capacity, uh, but this proposal uh, will not have a, an impact that will uh, make it over capacity and uh, cause extensive congestion here. Um, therefore, uh, your high officers are recommending approval uh, subject to the conditions listed in the reports. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barnard. Uh, we now come to the uh, submissions from the public. We have uh, nothing from the Parish Council. We have no objectors, no supporters, but we do have uh, uh, a submission from our applicant, um, Mr. Joyce, uh, the agent uh, from Carla Holmes. Uh, Mrs. Lake, would you read that out, please? Yes, Chairman. Share my screen. Chairman, members, good evening, and thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today, which I do on behalf of Carla Holmes. The proposals before you this evening have been developed to comply with the parameters outlined within policy HSA 24 of your housing site allocations DPD, a policy which allocates this site for development. In recommending the application for approval, your officers consider the proposal to be acceptable with regards to access and highways, drainage, landscape, ecology, trees, utilities, heritage and archaeology. Furthermore, it offers a range of benefits, a few of which I would like to highlight this evening. The development will deliver a range of public benefits, including 16 new homes, 40% of which will be affordable and a significant area of usable public open space, including a local, play, local area of play. It provides a number of new pedestrian and cycle connections to the north, west and south of the site that will benefit residents of the new development and the wider village, and will also enable the creation of on-site ecological mitigation areas to ensure that a net gain in biodiversity is delivered. Electric vehicle charging points will be provided for each block, and as the development is liable for sale, it will generate appropriate levels of funding to support the provision of local infrastructure. Moreover, the proposal ensures that the development will integrate well in its village edge setting within the North Wessex Downs area of outstanding natural beauty. It features a range of house types, sizes and designs, which have been refined through extensive consultation with officers both pre-application and during the determination period, to create a layout that your officers consider is sensitive to the site's location and will respect and enhance the local village character. It also provides a good balance of built form, garden areas, landscaping, access roads and parking, and your officers are content that there will be no unacceptable amenity issues affecting neighbours. The scheme features traditional building forms using materials that are in keeping with those found locally and that will also achieve a high quality finish. In conclusion, this application for full planning permission is in close compliance with the requirements of your development plan, has been refined through extensive consultation with the officers and is subject to no objections from statutory consultees or technical officers. My client is committed to bringing this allocated site forward in a timely manner and is looking forward to creating an attractive and high quality development which will contribute to West Barch's housing supply. As such, I hope you'll be minded to endorse your officer's recommendation and vote in favour for delegating approval. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Lake. Um, members, do we have any questions? We do have Mr. Joyce, the agent, in the waiting room. No, we have no questions. Uh, 
Mr. Joyce, uh, thank you very much for your uh, submission on behalf of your uh, client tonight. Um, we have no questions for you, therefore I will not be inviting you into the meeting. But uh, thank you very much for coming along this evening. We now come on to our ward member, and um, I think we've got Councillor Simpson in the wings. I'm not sure. Do we have him in the waiting room, please, Mr. Oliver? No, we don't. We don't. Okay. I then offer it to uh, Councillor Hilary Cole. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, first of all, I'd just like to say that uh, uh, Hermitage Parish Council did consider whether or not to uh, be represented this evening. But as the Parish Council have uh, no objections now to this application, uh, subject to uh, conditions, uh, they deter decided not to uh, come along. Although they did send a letter which is appended to the update sheet. Um, I think it's fair to say that there are a couple of areas that the uh, Parish Council have, still have outstanding concerns for. Uh, one is uh, with regard, which is relevant to West Berkshire, and that's regarding uh, traffic flow. But as Mr. Goddard will attest, this is a perennial problem uh, at that uh, junction of uh, the uh, New, uh, Newby Road and, and Pryor's Court Road. And the other, which is of um, no relevance to this uh, planning application, and that's the potential uh, overload on, on the uh, downland practice. Uh, for the doctor's surgery. Mm. Um, I think this application ha has come a long way uh, since the uh, appeal was dismissed in uh, 2017. Um, the DPD site said it was uh, suitable for approximately 15 dwellings, and we've now got 16. Um, I think careful consideration has been given to the design uh, and the layout, and it's pleasing to see that we're getting 40% of affordable housing. Um, so I think it's fairly straightforward uh, these days. It's a DPD site, uh, and I recommend uh, when we get to the day, I'll be. I do support this application, thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Cole. And if I might just come in there with regards to our objectors, uh, this came to committee tonight because of ten letters of objection, and yet we've received no uh, written statement. And all I will say is to uh, any objectors, this is your opportunity to put your case to the committee. And unfortunately, uh, we've not received anything to uh, take that into consideration. But uh, this has come to committee because of uh, of your objections. Um, we will now move on. And um, any questions of Councillor Hillary Cole. No, thank you. Uh, any questions of clarification of Mr. Masawa? No. Any questions of Mr. Goddard? No. Uh, therefore, I'll open it up to debate. Who would like to start, please? Tony Vickers, Councillor Vickers, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. I've, I've got a fond, um, fond feeling about this part of the district because within uh, half a mile of here, uh, my family. Uh, first lived in West Berkshire when I was um, uh, learning how to be a military surveyor 40 years ago. And um, yeah, I think ever since the uh, Hungerford Green has been built, uh, some more building in this particular location was needed in order to link that to the village. And I think this does it very well. I'm very pleased to see what they call the snickets, Mr. Mazawa's report. We call them gunnels up in the northwest where my wife comes from. But I think a snicket, I looked it up in the dictionary, is the same as a gunnel. It's a little cut through. And, you know, I, I'm always looking for permeability on uh, developments. And I think this is a really well thought through development. Um, of course, the site's gone wild and it's probably an absolute um, paradise for wildlife. But that's what happens when you stop using a piece of land in the countryside. Uh, the wildlife takes over. I just trust that the developer will look after what's there, rehome it and uh, then restore it uh, to, um, you know, what, what Hermitage deserve, another delightful little development. So I'd be very happy, um, unless members want to uh, say any more, to, to propose it. Thank you. Councillor Hillary Cole. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman. Councillor Vickers has sort of said it all, really. So uh, I will second Councillor Vickers' uh, proposal. Uh, and just to uh, say to Councillor Vickers, uh, we pronounce Snickets uh, as, as generals uh, where I come from. So <laughs> great, great local variation. Thank you. Councillor Barnett. Well, well, Councillor Cole's second, and I was actually second it, but uh, I have actually got 
a, a question I probably uh, I missed uh, um, asking before. I, I hope the uh, trees that were felled in 2016, and it looked to me some very well mature oaks that are laying down in the field. I hope there's some uh, good homes for them and they're not to wait, gone to waste. That's all I would say. Thank you. Well, um, we have a proposal and a seconder, but, but what I will say is we popped in with a proposal and seconder without any consideration of any conditions. Um, the whole business of management, uh, the management uh, concerns of the uh, of the uh, local area, a um, bit too late now. But uh, anyway, Councillor Bennyworth's come in now. Thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, very much echo uh, Councillor Vickers and uh, H. Cole. Uh, in their in their statements, and also the fact that the uh, uh, the provision of, of, of affordable housing um, is going to be um, much much needed, and, um, and 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 I'm very much in favour of what looks to be a very a very very good um, application. Thank you, Councillor Bennyworth. Councillor Hilary Colt, hand up. Uh, you are uh, Just to say, Chairman, at the back of the report, there's a an extensive list of conditions going. Mm down yeah. to 33 uh, including ecology yeah. and the report uh, informative yeah. as well so i think there's a, a significant uh yes detail uh, of conditions chairman so i'm I, quite I, happy I, with that yeah i, yeah, I, I am as proposer I, i've looked at the conditions and they yeah. seem to be getting everything yeah. Yeah, as long as we didn't overlook it in our excitement, um, th th there are extensive conditions. And uh, all I say is we didn't uh, consider any more. As long as we're happy with those, then um, no need to really address the Mr. Masawi or Mrs. Armour as the conditions, as the update sheet. Therefore, I have a proposal of uh, Councillor Vickers and a seconder of Councillor Hilary Cole. Um, and the recommendation will be for the head of planning in countryside be authorised to grant permission for this application at uh, the land at the end of Charlotte Close in Hermitage. And uh, Mrs. Armour, would you conduct the uh, vote for me, please? Yes, of course. Um, Councillor Mabs. Four. Councillor Barnett. Four. Four. Councillor Bennyworth. Four. Councillor Kant. Four. Councillor Hilary Cole. Four. Councillor James Cole. Four. Councillor Colber. Four. Councillor Vickers. Four. Councillor Hooker. Four. So that's unanimous. Thank you. And that application is approved. Uh, very quickly, uh, item five on the agenda. Uh, Mr. Till, any observations other than our written uh, appeals? Uh, just to direct members to the very comprehensive uh, summaries that uh, the officers provided on those appeals. Uh, I think the information there is excellent and speaks for itself. Thank you. Councillor Cole, Hillary normally comes in on this and thank, thank the officers very much for... Uh, uh, I, I do, uh, and I think, <laughs> I, I think it's interesting, Chairman, uh, that the appeals uh, are shown for both the eastern area and mm. the western area. So it does give uh, those committee members on the each committee the opportunity to see the appeal decisions uh, in areas that they're not um, directly involved with. Uh, and I think... Uh, I think Jake Brown, who puts these together, um, does, uh, uh, not Jake Brown, Bob um, um, Bray, Bray, Bray. Who puts yeah. these together, does a really, really good job, and uh, I, it's much appreciated. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for that comment, and if that could be noted, please, on behalf of this committee. Um, Members, that concludes our business tonight. So um, if I could ask you just to hold your positions until such time as Mr. Oliver uh, says we are no longer online, I will close this meeting at uh, 9.38. And thank you all very much for your contribution. And uh, this is my last uh, chairing of this meeting. Uh, there is going to be now obviously a, a, a reshuffle with regards to members and chairmanships. And uh, But thank you very much for your support over the last uh, five years. I think it's about five years. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. We've had some very interesting uh, applications to consider. And um, I, I've, I've gone away in the main thinking we've made the, we certainly made the right decisions in my mind. Uh, obviously, tonight there was some thinking we've not made the right decision. But uh, that is what this committee is all about. And that's what so, uh, I find um, enjoyable and, uh, and really quite educational. Uh, so thank chairman, you. Chairman, I much. think it will be a hard act to follow. So uh, well thank done. You. Thank you for being such a good chairman. Thank you very much, Councillor Vickers. Appreciate you. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So I've only known you for two and a half, like two and a bit years now, for since doing this, and it's been an enjoyable experience. And I wish you all the best. Yeah. Thank you very, very much. Very fair and reasonable.
Thank you very much to all, all you members. I really appreciate that. It was nice, nice of you. Quite emotional.